crazy today screaming. I don't know why. She's fed. She has a toy. The only difference is that the window's open, and that's about it. Goblin. So, yeah, we might have a bit of a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a yeah, bit of a meow. Little cameo appearance by Goblin. So a catastrophe. <sighs> it's the Prince Division meow hour. <laughs> Speaking of that, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Prince Division. Over this hello. is our second week in a row of three. Illegal. And yet we're doing it anyway. <laughs> and yet here we are. G chat, why does your mom let you have two Prince Divisions? <laughs> there are my notes. Okay. Hi. Oh my god. Hi, Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> And there it is. It stopped. Yay! <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. I seriously have no idea why she's so loud today. Like, I'm trying to figure it out, and I can't. Like, I have no clue. Clearly, it's because we need to visit Lady Odelia. Apparently. Her. <laughs> no, go to Lady... I'm forbidding it. Lady Odelia exploded. She no longer exists. Oh, <gasps> shit. <laughs> I thought she was so powerful, though. What happened? She, she spontaneously exploded. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> That's crazy. I can't believe such a tragedy would befall us. <laughs> speaking of tragedies, so they brought me in. Yeah, speaking of tragedies, they brought me in here to do the intros and read the bits. Oh, we had to let you do something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna get a front row seat and have popcorn from for the episode. Just... Dude, this is what happens when you get stoned on the job. Hamus is just just striking a pose while he's while he's stoned. He's just like I'm just sitting here. He's still the Eating. coolest. He's still the coolest dad ever, even as he's stoned. Truly, I imagine master of keeping a stiff upper lip. I imagine the rest of him is so, is stoned, but his sunglasses aren't. <laughs> She's just a statue wearing sunglasses. They still glint. Oh. Yeah, the the Prince Division's new hat rack is looking pretty cool, actually. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, before I get too lost in that, uh, let's go ahead and do some intros. <laughs> Our call. Where can they find you? What are you up to? <laughs> You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Arkolf and also twitter.com forward slash Arkolf. Tomorrow, no promises, but I may resume streaming starting with Spider-Man for the PS4. And that's about it. Woo! Bosco, where can they find you? What are you up to? They can find me at Ed Bosco VA on both Instagram and Twitter and right here on twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco. I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff throughout the month. I'm just happy to be here, guys. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh, Connor, I did forget one thing. Uh -huh. CM Punk! CM Punk! There we go. CM Punk! Yeah, that's, that's tomorrow. I'm... I was about to say, I was seeing some red flags for a moment there. <laughs> 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 Something's wrong. He's doing the intro. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, I'll 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 have an announcement when it gets around to my turn. Uh, but uh, Monty, where can they find you? You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter, and you can find me twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Uh, Twitter, I'm posting pictures of my fat frog, and it's great. Gerps is doing great, and my cats. Hey. Uh, you can find me on my Twitch. Tomorrow is going to be more Metopia. That game is stupid, and I love it so much. Um, we saved my bag of Doritos from uh, the Dark Lord Bosco, um, and we saved the three fairy sisters, Twerky, Midna, and Thanos. Um, we're on our way to try and like take our fight directly to Bosco's house so we can get our friends back. Our friends including Nemesis, my own Twitch chat, and Cooking Mama, as well as my cat Goblin, Merrix from Kirby and Dr. Coomer, as well as Mr. X, Dante from Devil May Cry, 
and the cac the fake cactus I watered in university. That is my RPG party team. So come and check it out. It's stupid and fun. That's all for me. Excellent. And Sarah, what are you up to? Where do they find you? At university? It's so British of you, Monty. Oh, well, it was. It was university. Yeah, but you didn't say at the university. No. We're the only anyway. place in the world that calls it college. <laughs> well, there's, there's there's college and university in Canada. It depends on what it is. I don't know what the definition is, but... Uh, Plus, I'm in British Columbia, so... Yeah. <laughs> Um, you can find me on Twitter at Sarah with an H and with an E, Willia. Um, shilled everything last week. That's new to shill. And since it's not Gateway, I don't really need to shill it again. So, uh, nothing new. Made calzones. They were terrible. Ooh. No, ooh. no, don't go ooh. They were, they were not good. I mean, they were edible, but oh man. Oh man. I was... You that can't gluten-free everything. The crazy calzone. You cannot gluten-free yeah, everything, fun. apparently. It's just calzones are hard. Oof. So, yeah, that's me. Woo! And, of course, they can find me on... Oh, goodness. Uh, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com. Slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, playing some card games, tabletop games, uh, also Yakuza 4 Remastered. I think next week will be the last uh, episode of Yakuza 4 Remastered, and then we'll be moving on to Yakuza 5. I'm getting close to the end of the series here. It's, it's getting scary. Bitter, bittersweet, eh? Yeah, a little bit. I, I honestly thought it would take longer, but... Well, I've just been blasting through them. Um, played some a bunch of different party games. We played some Jackbox. We played some Guilty Gear. I even streamed a little bit of uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, got through the uh, the entirety of the main uh, scenario for Shadowbringers, and now I'm just waiting for the next patch or when or whenever the expansion comes out. Two more months. Yeah. So technically a month and a half. So I'll just be sitting on my hands until then. Um, and I'll probably be playing more Wildermyth tomorrow, but I'll be doing it earlier because I want to watch All Out. <laughs> I haven't had an opportunity to watch wrestling in a very long time, so I just said fuck it, and I'm moving my stream up uh, a couple of hours so I uh, have some time to watch All Out. Because CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. <laughs> Uh, other than that, you can check out Dead House Sonata, uh, action RPG where you play the dead to fight the living. They have got a bunch of cool stuff coming out in sort of a lore explanation series they've got going on on their YouTube channel. Please be sure to check that out and check out that link that was just posted in the chat if you want to grab a, a Founders Pack to get access to the first and second ages. And also check out my DMs Guild, where uh, pretty soon here, within the next couple of weeks, I should have the Accursed Fighter uh, ready to publish to DM skills. So be sure to check that out when it comes out. Other than that, I'd like to thank our wonder wonderful sponsor for this evening's uh, oh. escapades. Go, Monty, go! Shit, shit, shit. Be gentle, be gentle. I, guess, be gentle. I, guess, I can't spill it. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you need them in like a Tupperware container or something with a lid on it. I need like maracas that are just filled with diehard dice. <laughs> that sounds like... Diana, I have, your, I have your next item idea. For diehard di maracas that are filled with dice. That'd be kind of fun, actually, if you if there if you have like a release where you just shake them up and then you release it. <laughs> that would be, and that's how you roll. That's like a sling, though, because you could like whip them around and then like throw them and launch the dice like a weapon. I don't know. Yes. That's <laughs> I totally want the ability to put someone's eye out with diehard dice. Tell Listen. me more. Listen, <laughs> they may have die in their name, but we that's because they you know if they're. They're so badass, not because we actually want to hurt people with the dice. I didn't they say heard die, it first, I didn't folks. Say die. die hard maracas coming never. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love your soundboard. I do too. I don't get to use it though. Yes, for good reason. I'm sorry. 
Uh, and if you go to dieharddice.com and pick yourself up some uh, wonderful dice and dice accessories, you can use the code THE UNEXPECTABLES to get 10% off your entire order. Um, with that out of the way, it's time to read off some bits and subs, and then I'll, uh, I guess I'll just get out of your hair. <clears throat> uh, me, thank you for the raid of 34 earlier. <laughs> Thanks, me. Oh, Connor. You're welcome, me. Uh -huh. Do you want to watch Dynamite while they do the session? Um, oh god, I guess I could. Yeah, because, like, we have the whole session to kind of just, if you want to watch it on the side. Guys. Yeah. What is oh, this sorry. Finish the bits. I'll talk to them. I won't tell her. I, uh... <laughs> well, I'll be watching Dynamite on the side, but I won't tell anybody about it. You, you just did. Travis, hey, Carrie, thank you for the 300. That's the joke. Thank you. That was the joke. I know. And I knew it was ruining. <sighs> Travis, hey, Carrie, thank you for the 300 bits. Curtio. Curtio. I see. Jinchi13, thank you for the 106 bits. Uh, Sergeant Tucker, thank you for the 100 bits. Last week of... Uh, so last week, some of our heroes got super stoned. General Scott92, thank you for the 1,000 bits. I've got to leave soon for my overnight shift, but I'll be sure to catch the VOD when I get back in the morning. Good luck, good night, and I hope you all have fun. Lexi Luna, thank you for the 25 bits. I'm excited for the game tonight. Uh, Jinty13, thank you for the eight months. Enjoying every episode. Cy Wolfen, thank you for the 12 months of subbing. Have a good game tonight. Flustered Bun, thank you for the 300 bits. Was watching a playthrough of Man of Milan just before this started while home alone. Not the best idea. Super anxious and scared now, but woo, Prince Division. How's y'all's week been? Also, CM Punk. BD Sora, thank you for the six months. Thanks to Probably Not a Mayor for my gift sub. I, yeah. I love horror games when I watch them after I watch a horror game. Like, I watched PT, and that was a huge mistake when you live by yourself in an apartment. That's all I can say. Ooh, Monty, we should do that when you're here. No, I do not want to. No, that game's too much. That game's a little too much. No, God. Oh, God I'm so oh, God. many. I'm so many. Oh, we can play a horror game. I don't know if I want to play PT, though, because that's big spoopy. <laughs> Weird sink, baby. I'm enjoying this. Mm. Just hearing Sarah laugh evilly is delightful. <laughs> Black Cat 7722 thank you for the three months of prime subage. I finally get back to watching this live. Good luck to you all on your rolls, and have fun, as always. Jinty13, thank you for the two bits. Robo Mom, thank you for the 16 bits. Dr. Dank Memes PhD, thank you for the nine months of subbing. Luke the Lucas, thank you for the 100 bits. Monty, as an Elcor fan, you should listen to the audiobook Mass Effect Andromeda Annihilation. The reader does a fantastic job with all the different voices, and Yorick is the best, sassiest Elcor ever. Oh, his name is Yorick too? No. Yeah. Oh, oh no. no, now you've gotta. Now you've He's named got after it your now. boy. He's named after my other husband, the one that's not bald, I think. He's got a hood on. We don't really know yeah, what the Yeah, we don't really know. He's got a beard. Is. He's got a really nice beard, though. Anyway, I apologize. Sorry. You can continue. Indeed. Um. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> I pulled out new dice and immediately rolled two natural ones. <laughs> Sorry, I was just replying to a message real quick. Uh. Evidently. Da, 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 Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. Previously on Gateway... Wait a second. <laughs> I know. It's not me for a while. Uh, Kuro Okami, thank you for the 11 months. Thanks to Robomom for my gift sub. Hooray, more D&D. Roll20 and the crew makes it all come together. Travis A. Carey, thank you for the 200 bits. Okay, I mistyped that. I am DMing a group, and they have their first big boss, Monty, since you have so much experience in Gorgon slash Medusa battles. How do I run one? <laughs> don't roll in that. Okay. Arkolf, why don't you tell them how to run it? Mr. Laughs a lot. 
Um, be just be aware that with petrification creatures, it is very easy to wipe. So you might want to have a fail safe if everybody gets petrified. Indeed. So in a sense, like have have a follow up if they get petrified. It can make them really, really. It could be very, very interesting. Um, and yeah, be, run it fairly. I mean, if you're if your players are packing mirrors. <sighs> Thank you. If your players are packing mirrors, you have to accept your fate a little bit. I'm sorry. That was you me. could also choose to run them in dim light settings. Because Medusa specifically states bright light to be affected by its own gaze. Mm, true. Mm. I love mm. that meme, though. Mm. Uh, da -da -da -da. Screaming at seagulls. Thank you for the 17 months. Finally get to catch you guys live. Woo! Sub Meow Sheen Gun, thank you for the 14 months. I can't believe we're getting three Prince Divisions in a row, just like old times. I've missed the one-year subversary, and I can't remember if this one's been done before. If the gang's all getting small, round glasses, they could be the Prince Nez Division. Okay. Oh, I've missed Prince Division puns. Uh, and Dark Cooley, thank you for the four months. Thanks to Probably Not a Mayor for my gift sub. Dream Treader, thank you for the five bits. Sergeant Tucker, thank you for the 100 bits. Currently in Final Fantasy XIV, trying to do some level 80 relic weapons, and I need to collect stuff from very specific areas. Help me, my best <laughs> dragon boy. You're my only hope. It depends Zach on Odu. what you're trying to collect. Zach Oduo, thank you for the 500 bits. I have successfully sailed the Pacific Ocean and landed in the Far East. I'm finally settled in waiting on my household items, and I can catch Prince Division during lunchtime on Sundays. Let's go be police. Uh, Kukulainish, thank you for the 200 bits. Uh, favor called, wondering what will happen next. Jinty13, thank you for the three bits. Dougler93, thank you for the f eight months. Thanks to Probably Not Mayor for my gift sub. I'm uh, for a second week in a row of Prince Division. You guys are all great. Uh, blame Bryant for the joke and love Bosco for the RP. Uh, Anthony, 12203, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Hopefully this week's episode is less stressful than last week. Good luck and roll 20, you already know. Last week was stressful? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I no, was giggling the whole time. This reminds I was me dead. why... This reminds me why I don't play competitive and cooperative games a lot, because Sarah, I get really, yeah, you're good. You were fine. You were totally fine. I know no, you were perfectly I, fine. <laughs> I'm going to feel guilty. OK, sorry. Go ahead. Crazy meta. Thank you for the 16 months of prime. Pretty crazy how long I've been watching now since day two of this stream's lifespan. I think that was when the party was dealing with Borky's sword friend, except he wasn't a sword. Was that the? Was that the water sword, the one that could talk? Or was there one that could talk? I don't know. No, Ron A long Falk time did. ago. Oh, right, Ron Fall, before he was a sword. Yes, indeed. Man, what a what a long time ago. Hot dog. Hot dog, hot diggity <laughs> dog. Lexi Luna, thank you for the 10 bits. Uh, Sarah made Kel zones. Awesome. <clears throat> they were I, so. I get it. Oh, ah! <laughs> oh, the Kel zones. That was, Solar that was, fire. Cute. That was cute. Uh, Solar fire, thank you for the two bits for bad rolls so far in the story. Uh, for the Prince Dovision. Uh, Erwin Elf, thank you for the 1,000 bits. For Tannis' sake, I hope Taylor from The Unexpectables makes an appearance. Ooh. Why? So, so they can have things poop on me because I'm a statue now? <laughs> Drago soon, thank you for the 100 bits. Here's some bins for the bins for the Prince Division. <laughs> uh, Cat Snivians, thank you for the three months of Prime. Jerry 17, 17, 17, thank you for the five months. Blonde Man Cat Snake, thank you for the 17 months of Prime. Flustered Bun, thank you for the 100 bits. Grabs roll 20 by the collar. Listen here, you Prince Division hitting program. I'm gonna need you to behave or else. Please. Jinty 13, thank you for the six bits. Big Peace Pipe, thank you for the nine months. Oh, Tannis, are you okay? Are you okay, Tannis? Because you've been hit by 
you've been struck by a stone criminal. <laughs> I hear the GameCube intro now. Connor. Yes. You you might have to go a little quicker. You have four minutes. Okay. I think we'll I think we'll be fine. Uh, Nom Nom Goblin, thank you for the 100 bits. Through a break in space and time, Cal got a clawed gauntlet, Brian got power fists, Gibby got a ghost skull, and Tannis got the power to summon Sephiroth. This is what happens when you double up on Saturday series. Night Allen 11, thank you for the two bits. Cucumbersome, thank you for the 14 months. If Tannis farts while he's petrified, is he Dutch ovening himself asking for a friend? <laughs> no, you see, he became the Dutch oven. I don't know what that means. Don't worry don't about it. <laughs> don't worry you know, about it. I'd explain it to you if you had time. Protoss 103, thank you for the 15 bits. Just played Dance or Just Dance 2021 with my mom, and now it's time for the Prince Division. Ooh. Blackfoot Ferret, thank you for the 420 bits. <laughs> Sloth uh, 13, thank you for the sub gifted sub. Tears of Mozart, thank you for the 15 months. Zen Lita, thank you for the 500 bits. It was inevitable that Tannis would be turned to stone. After all, he's a nice guy. Really solid, dude. Faceless42, thank you for the 100 bits. Got my second COVID jab, and now I'm fully vaccinated. I hope you can unstone Tannis. Jerry, thank you for the 200 bits. First time seeing Prince Division live. Let's go. Oathbreaker John, thank you for the 100 bits. I still don't know who can do this OCCM punk. Haha, <laughs> I'm kidding. I know who he is all this time. I just don't care for wrestling. Damn. Uh, Durgan, thank you for the 100 bits. Good luck coming down from being so stoned. Tears of Mozart, thank you for the 5,000 bits at work, so I gotta drop these bits before I get in trouble. See you all in the VOD. Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey there, buddy. Do you not understand sports ball? Are video games and gamers bringing you down? Then why not try a fantastic tabletop game with your own Die Hard Dice? Yes, Die Hard Dice. The specially made quality dice that gives you a quality game experience, but makes you smart and popular, too. So head on over to DieHardDice.com and get rolling today. Disclaimer, Die Hard Dice not guarantee you. You'll become smart or popular. Uh, Steven of the Sky, thank you for the 17 months. Been listening since The Face in the Attic. And I've got to say, you've all motivated me both as, motivated both me both as a player and as a DM. Blackfoot Ferret, thank you for the 500 bits. Real Meta, thank you for the 10,000 bits. I am not caught up. But here's some money because I love you all. Yes, even you, Bosco. Tears of Mozart, thank you for gifting 10 subs to the community. Roman Penguin, thank you for the 46 bits. Renfield88, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Thornton6000, thank you for the 5 subs. Gaijin Goomba, thank you for the raid of 61. Avion hey, Fan, thank him. you for the... Yeah. Mm. Avion Fan, thank you for the 15 bits. My group had low rolls all session. I better have stolen your bad luck. Siru, thank you for the eight months. Love y'all. Keep having fun. Sergeant Tucker, thank you for the 14 months. All high defense or HP and German accents. Panzer Division. I better bring a door knocker. Uh, hey. Hey. hey! I like him. I'm sorry. I just, I'm Toten totally. Z. Uh, Toten Dusty C. Bone. Toten thank you for the 100 bits. Uh... Woo! Ba three back to back to back Prince Divisions to top off my week starting my new job. Arkolf's dad statue joke had me rolling. <laughs> Doctor Dead Inside, thank you for the 100 bits. Got my COVID shot yesterday and I feel terrible. On the plus side, I can lay in bed and enjoy Prince Division. And finally, we have Demon Shark 666 with the 17 months. 17. Holy crap. Good luck tonight, y'all. All right. And that's it. I think the cats have been pacified. I moved the bed next to the door and put a blanket on it. So Fingers I crossed, think... Monty. It's good. Do you they're gonna really want me. to tempt fate? <laughs> you already have by thinking they're pacified. I know. We'll see. All right. Guess I'll get out of your hair then. No. Yeah, bye, bye, Bosco. They, I almost said Bosco. Why did I say Bosco? Bosco. <laughs> bye, bye, Connor. I wanted Bosco to leave. Bye, Bosco. I'm still the game. Bye, Bosco. You wanted to watch the you wanted to watch the match or whatever anyway. Yeah. Well, actually, it's both of you. So, bye, Bosco, and bye, Connor. All right, Connor, uh, I'll, I'll send you the link. Okay, guys, <laughs> I swear to God, for the love of God, please no. Shh, it's on. <laughs> when last we left our officers, 
Okay. Don't fucking get ahead of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I got to grab music. Give me a hot second here. <clears throat> Ooh. <clears throat> Bosco, for fuck's what? sake, please, in the <laughs> intro. What's wrong? You're gonna okay. win ah, mute yourself. Shh. So, when last we left our officers, the Prince Division was on a case to discover who was responsible for the murder of Cody Mason, a prince with his magical blood who was murdered on the streets by an unknown assassin. After following a plethora of leads that took them through abandoned city streets filled with monstrosities, unknowing and unnerving, the party managed to find a lead in a group of artists collected who are cursed or different in some manner of ways. Some curse involving the ability to see ghosts, while others, like Mac, are too beautiful for life. <laughs> As you guys managed to follow your leads, eventually you were led to Zyara Ceramics, a sculpture artist yard owned by Zyara, who turned out to be a Medusa in disguise. After infiltrating her party and finding a key to her secret workshop, you guys managed to bring your captain, uh, your, sorry, your, yeah, your captain of the Prince Division, as well as Lucy, your guys' desk worker in, to break into the home and search for evidence of why why Cody Mason had to die. As you guys delved into the house fighting revived, zombified statues, you guys made your way to the secret lab where you discovered two vampires being held against their will, as well as a dead werewolf on a table, eventually being you guys to find the laptop that belonged to Zara and a strange correspondence between her and an individual signed as KT, attempting to find some means or way to inflict vampirism on particular individuals. As you guys discovered this information, two of Zyara's henchmen jumped from the ceiling and initiated a fight, wherein Zyara herself joined the fray, summoning forth her stone-cursed minions, as well as staring down Tanis, turning him to stone. But Kel, with a well-placed mirror, managed to reflect back her own stare at herself and turn her to stone. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to stop her stone curse, who also turned Bryant, Officer Bryant, to stone as well. Now, with only two members of the Prince Division remaining unpetrified, the party has called the aid of the Orc Mafia to come and help collect the surviving individuals of this encounter and find a safe place to lay low until things blow over in the Devil Ward. So, as we return... Gibby, you collect the laptop of Ziara and manage to put it in a bag for evidence. And I had got all that stuff on the wall in a folder too, you said, right? Yes. You're just kind of grabbing stuff, putting it in an orange folder, taking everything off. Um, you watch as your captain, Captain Roche, is actually collecting vials and putting them in bags. You're actually like running out of bags and having to double up on stuff. It's There's a lot of evidence here. Um, but the notable thing is that Roche and Lucy seem to be in a hurry. They don't seem to want to stick around for too long right now. Given that you are in the Devil Ward, a place where there is no police presence, if there are reinforcements or backup on their way, you need to leave. <sighs> but we gotta wait for the orcs, don't we? There's no way you can move Tannis and Brian in their states, especially considering the fact that Brian is wearing, like, full armor that has also been turned to stone. Um... You maybe could muster Tannis, but it would take, like, four people, if not more. Yeah. And any failure to a strength check would 100% could risk, you know, dropping Tannis and potentially hurting him permanently. I guess we just wait, then. Okay. I might, um... Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Captain Roche will turn to you, you, Kel, and Lucy, and be like, we need someone to greet the orcs up above. Who wants to do it? I will take it. Okay. I Lay prefer low. Not to see them like this. He nods towards you. If you see any fun anything that doesn't seem like the orcs, and he kind of taps his ear where the sending stone is, you know what to do. Would you prefer I lay low or eliminate? Lay low. Got it. Gonna touch Kel's shoulder before you leave and nod to him. Be careful. I will. 
And Kel's going to casually grab Ziora's special sunglasses on his way out. Okay. You just kind of snatch them off her face and step away. Oh, she tossed them aside before. Oh, yeah. They're on the ground, actually. That's a good point. Yeah, you just kind of swing around. You actually, like, scoop it with your tail and bring up your tail to your hands. You kind of take them in your claws and you gently kind of, like, fold it. Hmm. Okay, we'll march over to the elevator. Okay. Make your way up the elevator. No music. This is starting to become a trend that you're not liking. <sighs> Firstly, <laughs> is this just a devil word thing? Firstly, it works not this. Yeah. And I need you to make a perception check as you kind of perch yourself in position of one of the patios just to keep your eyes out on the driveway that leads up. Ooh, soft 20. Nice. Nice, soft 20. I got to click over on Wallfly before I forget and I get yelled at by chat. There we go. So, as you look out on the street with the 20 perception, you see now rolling up the driveway. After probably waiting about 20 minutes, two very large unmarked black vans. Gail is going to put a finger to the sending stone. Captain, two large vans just pulled up. Uh, you see Gibby, as you're kind of finalizing, like putting all this evidence away, you see Captain Roche bring up his fingers to the sending stone and goes, if you see someone get out, tell us what they look like. We do. Okay. As you are kind of staring out, you see one of the front doors open and standing out is a female orc. Um, she is ripped, is the best way I could describe her. Um... And she, you can kind of hear some, like, guttural language. I'm assuming you don't speak orc. Nope. No, you just hear kind of, like, like kind of, like, yelling out. And it's kind of muffled through the glass as well. Um, and you watch as, out on, like, either side, you see kind of coming out the back is about four orcs in each van kind of coming out. Um, all wearing the same sort of uniform suit and tie on the males. Um, there are two female orcs, the one that just got out of the front car, and then there's another female orc that is surprisingly also wearing a suit and tie as well um and they all kind of get out and notably two of them kind of make their way to the front door and they seem to be kind of taking that same hesitation like you guys did approaching the place and as they gently knock on the door you can hear as you're inside the front door a rasp the suited orcs captain i believe it is our allies you hear a voice go the door. yeah let them in Will do. All right. As you walk to the front door, you open the door and you just look up. You're how tall are you again? Six foot eight. Yeah, you're tall. So this would be actually like you actually kind of look down a little bit. Uh, and as you open up, the woman kind of looks like goes, "Whoa, okay, this is not quite what I expected, but this is good." You are not Captain Roche, are you? No, I'm one of his subordinates. He is currently good. with the others downstairs. You watch as she turns around to the two male orcs, who at this point were like ready to like throw down with you, seeing you. And she kind of turns and goes, she kind of speaks in this like language, like, oh, Skoa. And they kind of like, mm, kind of lower their arms. She goes, and she reaches out a hand. She goes, I'm Dora. Dora, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Kel Zorin. You will shake. You guys, yeah. As you shake your hand, you notice that on her finger, she has a silver ring. Mm. The other two behind her have copper rings. Downstairs, we actually uh, found a stone cast orc with a silver ring. Mm. I don't know how long they've been here, but they were far oh. gone. We will take a look. For now, we have orders to get you out of here. And we'd rather not. You see her look behind herself towards like the street where she they drove in from. I believe we would rather not look, linger too long in this section of the ward, if that's okay with you. Yes, best not to dally. Please follow me. All right, you lead her forward, and like, you're in the elevator with like eight orcs, and you're packed. It's like a very sort of like tin can, sort of sardines in a tin can experience. And with no music, it's just like one of the orcs like, <clears throat> it's kind of awkward. <laughs> See, this but is why I suggested to Darcy to put elevator music. It would make this so much better. Dur the Dura kind of looks towards you and goes, You know Durzab? Yes, barely familiar with him. 
<laughs> she just kind of sighs and gives this deadpan look. And as they make their Can way I down, that? absolutely, you may incite that. Please, real high. Twenty-five. Ooh, Twenty-five. <laughs> You get the sense, despite his status above her as a red ring, um, she probably has opinions on Durzib that are less than flattering. I mean, given his personality, you get the sense that she's like, oh, that, you know, that, that flake, you know, like, He's uh, a sweetheart! That's my boyfriend, man! It's the pomegranate shampoo, isn't it? He smells like flowers. <laughs> Not even good flowers. It's a fruit, right? Pomegranate is a fruit? I don't get it. It is, yes. Orc men should smell like they fight every waking hour. I can see where you're coming from with that. It's so strange. You're a dragon man and yet you get it more than him. Shame. Bing! And the doors open and all like all the orcs just like kind of like squeeze their way out of the <laughs> elevator. Uh, Gibby, as you're finalizing and collecting things, the doors open and eight orcs kind of just roll in. Um, for the sake of brevity, um, they assess all of the statues. Um, and Dura, who's in charge, clearly, she's been sent to kind of order the, the people around. Um, they bring in like blankets and stuff and kind of cover um, Tannis and Bryant to just kind of protect them from scratches because those will translate over into wounds later if that happens. Um, they kind of look around and they look at the Medusa and they're like, you want this one too? I'll look to the captain. What did you captain what did you nods. With her? She's... She's the murderer. We need to take her in. Or, Can he looks over at you, her? Cal... It looks over at you, Cal, or we can end it here. Captain. Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? He kind of turns over to the orcs. You have space? And they're like, yes, we have space. When we're taking her. Captain, um... What about the two? She looks at the two boys. We'll take them in two. Right. They are citizens. They can be charged. You hear a voice down the hall. What about the vampire? He watches one of them. is just like one of the orcs is pointing at this vampire that's like turned to stone. Do we have room for her too, Captain? She did help us. Dura kind of turns and goes, we'll make room. Thank you. Gibby is kind of like eyeing the orcs and she's a little, she, it's the sense that she sort of wishes Durzug was there with them, but she's just like, oh, well. Uh, you notice as the orcs are kind of like loading everything out, they're taking their time. It's like a moving company, like a weird mafia orc moving company. <laughs> I want to imagine they have that as a side gig. Orcs, <laughs> orc Moving Incorporated. <laughs> yeah, Orc Moving Incorporated. <laughs> We'll take your kneecaps and we'll save your kneecaps with our awesome <laughs> moving packages. Uh, we may break your legs, but we won't break your table legs. They put uh, Bryant and Tannis in the same vehicle, and then they put the Medusa and the vampire in, in the other van that they've brought. Uh, the boys are also put in the other van as well. And the orcs are not, not, not intentionally mean, but they are not very nice to them. I will say that much. Like, oh no, crying shame. When they get dragged out, it's like, yeah. Put the fear of God into them. That's my thinking. To be fair, they are murderers, so. Oh yeah. Um. Eventually, as the orcs are making their way out, uh, Dura kind of stops at that one orc statue and kind of leans down and goes, "I was wondering what happened to Frog." Shame. Did you know him well? we had... Kind of. We both worked on the same level. But he was more of a scout looking into suspicious things. We've lost a couple of silver rings recently. The Baron will wish to know of this, but it is an occupational hazard. Which kind of places some of the stone back down. Come, our priority is the living. Let's go. 
Should we bring his ring back? No. We leave it here with him. Understood. Okay. All right. You guys make your way out. Notably on your way out, you notice that the little weird demon-looking stone statue is smashed on the ground. Uh, and as you guys are walking out, Lucy actually points at it. You know, the tiefling, your tiefling rogue desk worker. Mm. She points at it and she goes, we uh, we killed that. It was really scary, but we did it. Hooray. What oh, attacked you? Yeah, it came to life when you guys went down the elevator. Sound must have maybe alerted it. I don't know. I don't know why they come to life and some don't. And she looks over at the giant bug creature that's still like the oh, statue God. of the bug creature in the corner, which still hasn't done anything. I'm really glad that one didn't come out. There's also the dragon. Yeah, out on the we, front. we should leave. <laughs> Are you okay, Lucy? I'm tired, and I I'm really worried about Kel. I'm well, not you. I'm worried about Tannis and Brian. I just hope they're okay. Yeah, us too. Let's let's get out of here. Okay. And as you guys leave, you guys head to your car. Roche kind of, as you guys load into the car, Roche kind of turns the door and goes, we'll follow you. And you guys all load up into the car. At this point in the day, it is, actually, I'm going to do this instead. Let me know if the audio is good. It's good. Okay. As you guys drive, um, the sun is like slightly peeking up. Like you can just see a little, little hint of yellow breaching over the horizon as you guys drive. The city streets are empty. There's like no one. It's like, you know, 4 a.m. Captain Roche is dead silent, and Lucy is sleeping at this point in the back of the car, leaving just you and Kel to discuss yeah, or, if you wish. I mean, Kel it in the was back. yeah. It was Captain Roche who suggested ending things there, right? I didn't mishear that. Well, it's more like the the sense was like if we have to get you know our own out safely and we can't take her, then it's time for her to go, right? Like she's a loose end; we don't want to leave behind. No. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't just like, ah, let's just kill her. It was more like, hey, we we're in a situation and we are, might have to cut our losses if you think that's what's best. But yeah, she's in the back of a van, apparently. Maybe we can still get some answers from her. If we can be bothered to unpack her fire. <laughs> Gibby's going to reach over and put wrap the top of her hand over Kel's and squeeze it. Things are going to be okay, right? I, I hope so. It's going to lean into him. We've got to get him back. We do, yes. We don't deserve that fate. And Bethany doesn't deserve to be an orphan. Oh, God. Somebody's gotta... What What day is it, Monty? Uh, it's probably about Tuesday. Tuesday. Someone's gotta... Just... She should go stay with Mama Rugigi, but how do we... I don't... I don't think... We have is... Mama Rugigi's number. Yeah, we should... I don't know how much we should tell her, though. We should definitely, maybe, don't know, definitely not tell Nefane. Tannis wouldn't, not not while there's still hope. She wouldn't want Nefane to know. The best course of action would be to tell Mama Rukiki the truth. She would know how to conceal it from Nefane. She is a good mother. Right. Right. Hey, you hear Captain Roche say in the front seat is he's he's like, you know, hitting the turn signal and turning off. <laughs> Law abiding. There's no one on the road and he's using his turn signal. Um yeah, second best dad driver. Yes. He kind of looks up in the mirror towards the two of you in the backseat and goes, 
You need to think about it this way. Think about all the people we just saved. Not in the past, but in the future. That is what keeps me going, Captain. Still, there are so many lost already. We have to... Seven princes and seven, six princesses. I mean, it, we need to find out who they were, so at least their families need to know. They're probably from the Devil Ward and the Lich Ward, if I have to guess. Still, I want to know each of their names. I want to know who they are. Somebody will miss them. The car turns and eventually makes its way into the familiar, foreboding, and intimidating skyscraper of the Stronghold, the Orc Mafia base of operations, uh, also casino uh, and restaurant. Uh, the base floor of the fountain is dancing around as you guys pull in. Um, notably, one of the orcs kind of steps out of the van and walks towards you and leans his head in. You can hear an idle conversation where he's like, you're going to go in the under, like kind of instructing Roche where to go in the underground parkade and hands him off a parking pass. Uh, you guys follow in the vehicle and eventually park the car. Um, notably, they keep the Medusa and the vampire in the van, but they grab the two guys. Um, and the rest of the orcs collect both Tannis and Bryant statues and load them in one at a time up the elevator. What kind of music is playing in the elevator? <sighs> Sorry, Monty. <laughs> Could it be Brian's ringtone? Just for giggles. Hold on. Hold on. Uh... Oh, that's nice. That is so much better. Yay. Okay, there are some gifts to keep your shampoo. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's what you get. All right. So, as you guys make your way up to the familiar floor, um, it's the same floor where you, I believe, met Baron Dramar for the first time, the Orc Mafia boss. Um... It's a sort of, like, stream of people. There's Tana's statue in the front, followed by Bryant's statue, followed by you guys. Oh, I hope Amelia doesn't see Bryant. Oh, no. I mean, she wouldn't be out in this crowd, probably. She might be peeking out of the door, though. Uh... This is her floor. Yeah, she lives on this floor, too. Can I... Can, oh, I don't know if Kelvin's gonna. That. Can I roll a perception check for spotting anyone I recognize? Sure, absolutely. Go for it. Gee. Mm, 12. 12? Okay. I will roll a stealth check. I'm trying to find appropriate chill music that fits here. And I'm having some difficulties, so I, I apologize. Would this work? No, that's way too scary. Yeah, it's All a right. little too that's really that's dire. A, that's a little too <laughs> dire there. Um What if it for the first time we were here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this works. I'll yeah. do this. This works. All right, twelve. That's good. Uh... Oh my god. I hate this dice. I'm not gonna use this set of dice. Forget it. It's real <laughs> It's going away. Um <laughs> So I rolled a natural one. Um, oh, God. You notice, uh, as you guys are walking, you remember where her room is, and you kind of, like, crane your neck past, like, the, the moving company of orcs currently carrying your petrified companions. Um, and as you look over, you do see in front of Amelia's room, currently sitting in his, like, recliner chair, um, is another orc, which apparently you assume is a guard of some kind for her door. Oh, no. You can see them currently, like, sleeping on the job a little bit. Oh, no. Is it Tannis' friend? I don't think anybody else of you have met Yagnar, so... It just looks like a very kind of middle-aged-looking orc guy. Good thing he's asleep. Is he missing any fingers? 
Um, from this angle, you can only really just see his form and what he's doing. I would say you can't see details like that. Okay. Well, oh, actually, to be fair, uh, that's that's meta gaming because I wouldn't know about his missing fingers anyway. So never mind that. Mm. Uh, but you guys turn off towards the Baron's office, but don't go towards the Baron's office. You guys are led to a what appears to be some sort of lounge area. Um, and as you enter inside, currently Dura is instructing them where to put your friends. So like couches and stuff in here? There is, yeah. There's like chairs. Um, it, it looks like a place where they probably would host like parties, um, like meetings and parties and dinners and stuff like that. But a lot of the stuff has been kind of cleared out. Almost like a wedding venue for like a personal wedding venue space. Ah. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'll just take a seat. Yeah, you kind of take a seat down. And now you guys feel relatively safe. <sighs> Are the Tanners and Brian statues still covered? They actually uncover them. They take the blankets off and kind of put them there. One of the orcs even is just like, you know, if they don't bring them back, make some really nice decorations. And then another orc kind of smacks them and like points towards you guys. He goes, well, I'm just saying, look at this pose. They're really nice. And they smack them again. He goes, all right, I'm sorry. And they kind of like stumble away. Eventually you hear some heavy footfalls approach the room. As Baron Dramar, looking rather tired, enters the space. His suit is actually not buttoned up all the way. Like, it's kind of, like, un like opened. Um, and he's uh, currently, as he enters inside, he's got a cigar perched in his mouth. And he's just kind of tightening his tie as he steps and leans in through the door and steps into the space. And he looks over and notices the three of you. Uh, Lucy's staying in the car. Um, she's like, I'll, I'll just stay with the car and the, the you know... The statues that are in the van. Just keep an eye on them. Make sure nothing happens. So, I'll get to my feet as he enters. Baron Jamar. Lauren Gibby, if I'm not mistaken. You're not, sir. He looks over towards you, Kel. You again? Greetings to you as well, Baron Jamar. He turns over towards Captain Roche, who just kind of looks up at the Baron and goes, How many years has it been, Mr. Roche? I'm glad to see the favor has evened out our honor. He kind of gives a little half smile and pulls the cigar from his mouth, and Roche kind of gives a bit of a, kind of looks towards you guys and looks back towards Baron Namar and gives a little bit of a nod. And Roche kind of turns and goes, We're even. He turns towards the two of you and goes, I'm going to go speak with Lucy. You two can handle this, I can assume. And he looks more towards you, Gibby. Yes, sir. Can I inside that? Sure, absolutely. Blink. 18. 18. From the conversation, you get the sense that Captain Roche obviously did some manner of favor for the Baron. You're not sure what the hell it was. Um, you get the sense that he never wanted to, I'll say this, based on your knowledge of Baron Jamar and his honor system, you get the sense that Roche did something that garnered a favor, but Roche never wanted to use the favor, and he's a little ashamed that he had to, but at the same time, he's like, all right, favor's done, I don't want to deal with you, I want to process everything else. You get the sense that Roche has, you know, paperwork and more investigation on his mind right now. Well, I I'm more curious about why he looked at me. Oh. I mean, your boyfriend. Yeah, he's pretty I, obvious. I, I wasn't sure. I was like, I is it something he thinks I can't handle because the last last time he saw me? Or was it because of, you know, my orc boyfriend? Yeah. Okay, just it's, wondering. It's because of your orc boyfriend. I will say that. Hey, my orc boyfriend helped get us this, get us this, get us this call. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Captain I like Rose how you're both of... specifying orc boyfriend as if it's something out of the normal. <laughs> uh, Captain Roche kind of gives a little gentle nod towards you and makes his way out. And you watch as one of the orcs actually walks up to the Baron and they, while looking at Roche leaving kind of mutters something in orc. And then the Baron kind of shakes his head like no. And then he turns towards the two of you and walks up and he examines Tannis uh, and Bryant and... 
he, as he looks at Brian, he kind of turns and towards you and goes, I warned the boy. It was her stone curse that got him. Mm. It was Yara herself that got Tannis. I think but it I goes. A favor. From what I heard, you know, if you don't want the bitch, I have a nice fountain we could perch her on top of. If Captain mm. Roche has no further use for her, that is actually what I was thinking. Hmm. Fitting. She wasn't the most amicable individual when it came to our business. It's not nice having enemies in the Devil Ward. She and everyone at her party, quite a few individuals were discussing your downfall when we infiltrated. <laughs> you have the quite other... a few enemies, some more obvious than others. I just thought you should know that. Roll a persuasion check, Cal. Oh boy, sixteen. What? Sixteen? What the hell? Ah! Oh, don't don't knock it. It's a good day. It's a good day. He leers down at you, and he is taller than you. He's a big guy. Like Baron Nirmar is the biggest orc you've seen. He kind of leans over, like not leans, but he kind of cocks his head over towards you and gives you just a little gracious nod, which is you know pretty decent for him. Hmm. I'm afraid that dealing with this is a little outside of my wheelhouse. What I can promise you is that they'll remain comfortable. Orcs haven't been the most well-versed in magics. We appreciate it, sir. Hmm. Thank you for your hospitality. Certainly. He kind of looks back towards Bryant. I wouldn't want to have anything else make Amelia upset. And despite what he might think of me, and he turns over and looks at Tannis. I still appreciate what you did. The blood of family runs deep. That I know. We also, there was a silver ring among the stone cast. Thrug, I believe Dura called him. Thrug, hmm. one of my scouts. <sighs> you see him kind of bring up his hands to his eyes and kind of, you know, it's early in the morning and he kind of puts the cigar back in his mouth and <sighs> I'm losing too many scouts lately. Too many of a lot of things. Too many people sticking their nose in business that they shouldn't be. I'll see you at the meeting. And you watch as he turns and walks away. Dora, keep them comfortable. Get some guest rooms set up. And he leaves. Uh, what time is it now, Monty? Probably 6 a.m. You guys are exhausted. I think it'd still be too early to call Mama Rigigi, so. Kel is... Are the Bryant and Tannis statues next to each other? Yeah, they're like gently set up next to each other. Then Kel's going to walk over to the two of them. Okay. Does Tannis have his sunglasses on? Uh, you know what? He does, but they aren't stone. Kel is going to very, very gently take Tannis' sunglasses off. Look at him in the face for a good long pause. And he's going to gently place the R sunglasses on his face instead. He will step back, look at them both. Hang his head and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Gibby's gonna come up and hug him from behind. We're gonna fix this. We are going to fix this. Uh, 
You hear a bit of a commotion in the hallway. Well, turn and look at the door. Uh-huh. You watch as the door opens and you see Durzib kind of stumble in. Uh, how many orcs are still in this room? Uh, probably about three. Uh, two that seem to be kind of standing guard, and then Dura, who's kind of in charge and is just kind of watching you guys, you know, what you're doing. She seems to be kind of your, uh, what's the word? Chaperone, I guess, for lack of a better term. Gibby starts to move forward as soon as she sees him, but then she remembers the other three there, sort of stops, like, wait, this might not be okay. I better, you know, in front of coworkers, I'm not, she's not sure. He kind of turns over and goes, oh, Gibby. And he kind of runs over and just like, if you permit it, he just gives you a big old hug. It, well, she's surprised at first, but as soon as he does, she's just like, fuck it. She just hugs him back. Hey, thanks for huh. thanks for helping. Notably, he, uh, he currently has some Band-Aids on his face and like, you, you can see some smeared blood. Um, and, like, you notice there are actual, like, holes in his suit. Like, it looks like he also had a bit of a night. He goes, I got here as soon as I could. I was a little bit preoccupied. You called it, um, a stealthy time, I'd say. Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, don't worry. You know, it was, we were going to be unstealth eventually, so. Kind of pats at his suit with the holes, like, oh, your suit. Oh, don't worry about the suit. Look at the shirt. He pulls back the suit. He's wearing a salmon shirt. It's salmon. So hard to find in my color. And you watch as Dura, the female orc in the background, just goes, ugh, and just opens the door and leaves and closes the door. We're... I'm okay. Um, I mean, as well as I can be. Looks back at the statues. Yeah, you're doing better than some, I'd say so. It was was close. I won't lie. Kel, Kel was amazing. <laughs> Kel's still hanging his head in front of Bryant and Dennis. Hey, Kelly. It, they're, they're what? Did you just... Kel- <laughs> Ke- Kelly, I mean, that's what you called him, right? I was pretending to be Lauren. Uh, oh, Lauren, shit, remember? that's right. Uh, <laughs> Kel's gonna look back at him incredulously. Like, what the hell? Sorry, I got my names confused. Um, <laughs> Kevin. You don't shit. even know my name, do you? I I feel like I'm, I'm just... It's Listen, it's been a night, all right, for everyone. <sighs> let me Let me get some rooms for you. Uh, Gibby, do you want your own room, or...? Um, I'll stay with you if that's okay. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Gil will hold out his hand for a handshake. He kind of suspiciously takes it. Good. The fool! Cure wounds. <laughs> <Or healing. laughs> yeah, you heal him up. You watch as like some of the wounds on his face kind of he's just like, oh <laughs> magic, right? Thanks. Um shame we can't do anything from a shirt, but appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank can you I, for your help. Can I at least clean the blood off his outfit with participation? Yeah, you just kind of like gently kind of flare your fingers and clean out the blood. There's still like giant holes where clearly arrows and crossbow bolts went through, but Jesus you Christ. Know. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, eh, quagoths and uh, other drow that aren't so friendly. I mean, the arrows aren't the hard part, it's the poison. Did you get poisoned? Only a little. <laughs> You're okay though now. Yeah, I'm good. Fit as a fiddle. The healing super helps, and you're here. So, emotionally, I have to say I'm feeling pretty all right. <laughs> Come on, get some rest. You too, Carl. <laughs> Gibby gives Kel a look, like just sort of like, do you want me to correct him or? Do you not actually know my name, or is this payback for the needles? 
What do you mean the needles? What do you mean payback for the needles? Oh, nothing for you to worry about. Yet. Roll a, de roll a deception check. <laughs> 18. Oh my god! <laughs> he, rolled, he rolled a natural 20. Damn. He watches, oh. as, he, as he leaves the two of you out, he's just like, wait, were you lying about the needles? And it just, we're gonna cut there. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys are kept in like very nice hotel rooms, Roche and Lucy are also offered them, um, but they both refuse. They end up sleeping in the car. Um, oh. Yeah, Roche is definitely the cowboy sleep on a chair kind of guy. Lucy is already asleep in the back seat by the time you check in with them. Um, you guys are kept in rooms. Uh, But you guys take some time to, you know. Full rest? Full rest, yep. So go ahead and write off. Uh, Bryant and Tannis, obviously, you get no benefits of a full rest. You cannot sleep because you are statues. So. Ah, God. No, 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 not negative slots remaining. Go back. No slots. You are no longer a caster. You are now Gibby, Gibby <laughs> human woman. Hey, I've been pretty terrifying just with that. Um, but you guys will wake up relatively, you know, in middle of the day, probably like late in the evening. Because considering you go to bed at like six a.m., you guys wake up at about three. Um, Gibby, you spend the night with Durza, nothing eventful happens. He just straight up passes out the moment his head hits the pillow, like he's exhausted, and so are you. Um, but he does shoot up awake, like, three hours later, going, <gasps> KILL! And then immediately lowers himself and goes back to sleep. Just kind of- You remember my at, name mid-sleep? Just kind of look at him, just jolt up and look at him bleary-eyed, like, uh, just, just tug him and go back to sleep. Yeah. You guys wake up about three in the evening. Um, food is provided. It is like hotel food. Um, oh God, school would be getting out right at this point, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. Um, Gibby's gonna, she's gonna, I have Mama or Gigi's number, right? We all do. You do, yeah. Um, Durzib actually, like, as you're going to call, he goes, he kind of stops you, he goes, call Mama or Gigi. Yeah, somebody... What did I do wrong? Oh, no, Tannis's daughter. Oh, right. Somebody, um, she's gonna need to go to her. Well, hey, I have an idea. Okay. Why don't we go pick her up and we let her stay with Amelia, like a sleepover. You uh -oh. know, kids, kids love that. I don't... I don't want to risk her finding out. I think going to Mama Rigigi's would be more normal. I don't know, tell her, tell her Tannis is on a stakeout for us or something and she will be gone for a few days, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know, part of me just, you know, it's a bit safer here. I don't, I don't think, <laughs> you don't think she'd be safe with Mama Rigigi? <laughs> no, no one's safe with Mama Rigigi. You see a thousand yard <laughs> stare on the floor. You know what I mean. I know, I know what you mean, but I just, I don't know, it just, She's closer than, you know, it's just, uh, nah, you're right. We'll call up Mama Rigigi. I just think me and you going to get her might make her start to wonder what's going on. You know, what? Kids love me. No, I just that, you know, where's her dad? Where is, oh, you know, it's, yeah. it's, you know, he's got the arrangement with Mama Rigigi to take care of Nefane if he's busy on the job. That might Fair not enough. make her... It would be a good idea otherwise, just also the way Amelia can kind of get around. I don't want her to see Bryant in that state. That's true. Amelia's a bit of a mouse in that sense. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go for it. Right. All right. I'll make that call. All right. Easy enough. You call Mama Rigigi and gently inform her that uh, Amelia will need to be picked up. That just the short extent of it? Do I need to... Yeah, no, no roles necessary. Just for the sake of brevity, yeah, you call up Mama Rigigi and she is just like, very well, I will cover for him. Yeah, just, I don't know, I think 
let Nefane know that uh, he's on a stakeout for the Prince Division. It was very last minute and he had to leave his phone with us because it's important he's not you know he's incognito but he's gonna be checking in with us through other means and we'll keep in touch no no by all means i will lie to the child it's fine i'm sorry i'm so sorry he wouldn't if there's still hope he wouldn't want her to know he wouldn't want her to worry uh, this is fair but you cannot hide them from these things for forever i know it is best to be honest with children than to lie to them, even if the truth is very harshful. <sighs> Cross that bridge when we come into it, but right now we... We're gonna fix this. Bad human philosophy, but an honest one. Very well. I will see what I can do. Tell Durzip to stop being a milk drinker and to get his ass in gear. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Mama Rigigi. Goodbye. Any, any time. She hangs up. I'll heave a sigh and lower my phone. And then sort of look quizzically at Durza. She says to stop being a milk drinker. <sighs> he just like throws back his head and goes, it's good for calcium in your bones. <laughs> oh, it's literal. Okay. <laughs> you know, that one lady, um, Dura? No, wait, never mind. That was to Kel. Never mind. I can't talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you weren't aware of that. Yeah, too bad. It was really would have been funny. <laughs> All right, well, let's go get your friend Kel. And uh, I guess we'll figure out to, what to do from there. Yeah. Thanks for letting me spend the night. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> I mean, I kind of owe you because, you know, I'm spending nights at your place. And I, you know, how else can I pay you for the smell of bird poop and lovely apartment smell without letting you come in here and smell uh sweaty orc and vinyl records on the walls don't threaten me with a good time mm. all right let's go okay kel you had a very comfortable sleep it was a very cozy bed that's right those beds would have been huge because they're orc yeah made. they're massive beds arkov mm -hmm. well i'm here There's also room service, giant showers, like jacuzzi tubs. Like it's it's a whole nice shindig. Hmm. I would say Kel probably didn't have a very comfortable sleep. Like not knocking the beds or anything, but his mind was elsewhere. Fair enough, yeah. As you guys get up and meet up with each other. Notably, Roche is waiting. Oh, Captain. There you are. He kind of steps up to you. And he's, the look on his face is rather strange. His, his brow is kind of pursed. He looks almost like confused, um, but not like a, like a dangerous way, if that makes sense. Like not in a panicked way, more of just like a huh sort of way as he approaches the two of you. I have a question for you two. Uh, yes, sir? Do you know, are you Eagle too? Does that mean anything to you? Which one of us was Eagle one or something? I'm assuming you spoke with Speed Demon. Yeah, some person got into our police comms and are now asking for you. Oh, that is good. I was actually just about to send them a message. That is not good. Did you let civilians gain access to the police comms? Nope, they <laughs> did that on their own, Captain. That's God the cursed artist collective. Yeah, they're they're kind of good at that. Well, they're asking for you, and they're giving us some very good information. When you can get down to the car, get down to the car. We'll do so. Yes, sir. Tannis, Tannis and Bryant are secured? Yeah, they're, they said they're taken good care of them okay all right unless you have any business to do here and he kind of looks over at Durzib and Durzib's Durzib, like kind of looking away like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> like just like towards Captain Roche like has no idea who he is oh, um, Durzib, this is Captain Roche my boss and Captain Roche this is Durzib Gibby's boyfriend I was 
<laughs> yes, I learned about the boyfriend thing. He kind of looks over towards you, Gibby, and looks back and goes, Congratulations, she's a very nice woman. And Durzip goes, oh, yeah, and congratulations, she works for you. Um, she's very <laughs> smart and nice, and she can blow shit up, which is pretty fucking cool. Um, nice, I nice feel like I'm standing between one of my dads and my boyfriend. <laughs> a little <laughs> bit, watching yeah. The, watching the most awkward exchange. Kale right, is well, smiling a gremlin smile off to the side. Durzim is like kind of doing that. You know that thing where people have their hands to the side? They like, you know, they're, they're really tight to their side and they kind of like tap their hands into like their thighs, just like. Standing well, at attention. I'm going to go report to the boss. Gibby, you have a good day. Don't turn to stone. Nice meeting you, sir. Goodbye. And he like awkwardly kind of departs. Goodbye, Durzim. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Let's go talk to these weird people on the radio. Yes, sir. I think you would like them. They're actually quite nice. I don't like them on my police comms. But that can wait. As we walk, I just want to go next to the captain. Captain, um, can I ask a question? Yes. How, how did you find out about Durzub? We're arranging a meeting of some of the most powerful figures in the city. It may have come to my ear in the form of Baron Dramar. It's not a problem? Don't let it be a problem. Yes, sir. As you guys make your way towards the elevator, the elevator actually and then opens and you see that one orc who is sleeping on the chair um, and next to him you see currently um, holding a soccer ball uh, Amelia actually oh hello little Amelia oh hi she's like she, again like you're like oh hello and she's like ah like for a second <laughs> oh. I am so sorry I do not oh. mean to frighten you you kind of you're really close so it kind of scared me hi hi Amelia. I'm sorry is Bryant with you? Um, not not today. Um, it's just us two. Oh, okay. Um, can you tell him Gibby I... wanted to visit her boyfriend. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. It, mm. He watches the orc next to her. Kind of is like, should I cover her ears? No, I I should cover. No, I'm not gonna cover her ears. It should be fine. Oh well. Um, Durza talks about you a lot, and he says he likes you a lot. So. Just kneel down to her level. It's like, I like him a lot, too. Mm. Keep me posted, okay? Oh, yeah. We had pancakes. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And he's trying to find, like, human dating things, and he was asking me. <laughs> Are you giving him good information for my oh. sake? Yeah, only the best. I mean, I don't mind if you mess with him a little bit. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Okay, hon. We have to go do some more okay. work stuff, but it's good to see you. Mm -hmm. Good to see you, too. Bye! And you watch as she kind of, like, gently walks off, and the other orc kind of follows behind her and kind of gives you guys a bit of a nod as you make your way into the elevator. It was good to meet you, too, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 uh Yantha. Yagna Yantha. Oh. <laughs> now, do we, do we know that name from Tannis, at least at this point? Just the name, at least? I can't remember if Tannis mentioned it. Connor, did you have Tannis ever mention that to everybody else? Um, I remember we went I to an he, ice cream I, parlor I think all together he, at once. I think he might have brought it up at some point, but he never really talked. Weren't much we about all it. there when you had the big blow up with him, where you're like, "I don't hate you, I just hate who you work for." That was Durzim. that was to Durzim. What yeah, I, you know I, I, mean. I feel oh, like all he at least mentioned Yagnar's name, but that's about it. I would say then in that case, you guys are kind of like, huh, I feel like we've heard that name as you get into the elevator. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, just for the, the sake of that. Um, you guys load up in the elevator and make your way into the car uh, where you currently hear on the police radio, like beatboxing, <laughs> like two people beatboxing over the radio and Lucy <laughs> just looks over at you like, please make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this, no, this is a good beat. Let it go. I, I look to hear it. 
I'll look to Kel and just be like, do you want to take this? Uh, I suppose I can. <laughs> Kel will grab the radio and go, yeah, speed demon, hello. <gasps> Eagle 2, coming in. Hi, hi, it's us. I mean, you know who we are. Like, we have to use our code names, obviously. But hi, it's us. You remember us? Of course. It is good to hear you are okay. Yeah, I'm glad you guys didn't die. We thought you got kidnapped in vans. We were going to plan an infiltration to save you, but it turns out you guys are totally okay. I, I wouldn't say totally okay. Yeah, what happened? Oh, over. That's <laughs> right. Sorry, I forgot. You're cut out. She's clearly talking to someone else in the background. Well, we dealt with Ziara. She will not I'll... be an issue anymore. Do you guys want to just fill them all in on basically what you did, just for the yeah. sake of brevity? We'll also mention that Tannis and Bryant are stone. Yeah. Oh, shit. Over. There's, like, silence for a bit. Speed Demon. Do you... Does anyone there know someone who can help? I'm Um... Oh... Oh, geez. Um, well, you know, maybe Gordon? I don't know. Uh, let me see what my friend Gordon knows. He knows a lot of people. Um, I mean, cat, can you put the cat away? Put the cat away. <laughs> you have a cat? Yeah, they wander in sometimes because of the mice in here. Um, I could find out for you. I just want to let you guys know that, like, there were some people who saw some stuff um, who might be dangerous. So you guys should probably be super careful. Over. The people who saw some stuff? Yeah, like, probably people who are friends with Jara. Over. Oh, got it. Thank you for the heads up. Over. Apparently, Ginye saw some guy on a roof. Like, big guy, bald, kind of scary. And um, was watching when you guys left in the vans. So I don't know what that was. We didn't follow you, so maybe that's okay. Over. Oh, I see a Goliath. No, it was uh, a human, I think. Oh wait. Uh, uh, can we roll on that? Can we roll on that? I mean, if you know, you know. So it's that bodyguard, right? Yeah, I couldn't remember if that other bodyguard was a Goliath or a human. He was human, and he, I remember he was bald. All right. Thank you for remembering that. I that's not in my notes. He has a name. <laughs> what was his name? I don't actually think I wrote that. It down. Is I can't tell you. I'm letter to Stone. <laughs> if you remember the the email on Zora's laptop, laptop, uh, it mentioned his name, Zugan. Yes, that's right. What was it? Um, Zugan. Zugan. I look to Kel and be like, oh shit. Uh, great. That means the big bad is aware of us. Mm, wonderful. Or, at the very least, aware that, like, the Orc Mafia is involved. But you guys are on unmarked bands. I mean, you're totally fine. You know? But, for right now, if your friends are stoned, that's, like, rough. Um, can you hear, how, you hear, like, some, like, it sounds like, you know when a kid, like, hands off, like, a microphone off to their parent, he, like, screeches and, like, kind of, <laughs> they just all that thumping? Mm -hmm. You watch, she's like, why the fuck are you... Hi, it's Genye. Um, I don't know what Mac's doing, but she gave me the receptor, so just give me a sec. I think she's going to talk to... No, no go left, dude. He's working to the left. You fucking... Over. What second? You're just like a bunch of rambling. You just hear voices in the background. It's chaos, clearly, there. Um, there's a moment of pause, and, like, Roche and Lucy are both staring at the two of you like you guys have no heads. They're like, what the fuck is happening right now? I know what it seems like, but they are very helpful and very skilled. <sighs> yeah, all right. And Rose just kind of leans back in his chair. Eventually, the voice comes back. Hey, it's Mac again. I mean, it's uh, Speed Demon. So I got good news and I got bad news. What is the bad news? Okay, so the bad news is you're going to have to meet another guy to meet him. Okay, what is the good news? The good news is, is that we know a guy who could probably save your friends from being statues. <sighs> then whatever we need to do, we will do it. Okay, sweet. So, I'm going to give you an address, okay? Okie dokie, over. 
And you're gonna look for a guy on this address. Uh, so, 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 and she just spits out the address because I don't want to say an address. It's a, it's an old kind of hangar place. It's like a, it's like a small like auto, like a um, garage thing, I guess. Um. So we're gonna want to go there, and there's a guy there, and his name is Dalcom Brassboot. You want to talk to him, okay? Can you spell that out for us, please? Uh, D A L. D A L. K H O M. K H O M. And then Brassboot, which is two words, and they're exactly the way they should be spelled. Cool. If you go there and say that you're a friend of ours, specifically Gordon, he should be able to help you out. He could be kind of, eh. I don't know. Best of luck. That's all I really got. We'll keep an eye on things for you. I like this. This is fun. Over. Thank you very much for your help, Speed Demon. I greatly appreciate it. Over. Yeah, no, anytime. All right. This is Speed Demon. Over and out. Mission accomplished soon-ish, I hope. Over. And they hang up. Address acquired. Yeah, it's in the central ward. This oh, address. Thank God. I will slowly look over at Captain Roche. See, he looks. What he's thinking. He's like, I. The fact that they're helping is good, but he's just like. You realize we're gonna have to reset the comms now, right? You realize that won't stop them, right? Yeah, with all- He the... rolls his eyes and kind of brings down a hand down his face, and he goes, You may as well not bother, Captain. <laughs> it is good to have allies in many places in our line of work. It's fair. All right. I'll drop you off on this location. We're going to take all of this evidence to the precinct. Please be careful, Captain. The tower may be aware, as you heard. Well. Gives me another option to shoot him again, I guess. Kel, I just thought of something. What is it? If that that bodyguard of the towers was watching us, do you think Tannis's brother knows? That depends if he saw Tannis' statue being loaded up. We don't know how long he was up there. If he only saw us leaving, there's a chance that he would not. That's true. All right, let's go. All right, now roll a survival check for Captain Roche. With guidance. Roll a four. That is four. will say, you are a good captain. You don't need to reset the comms. It is okay. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Thirteen. One thing at a time, he says, and he rolled, he rolled a 22 <laughs> with your bonus. He brings you to a decrepit looking, like, not like really bad part of town, but it's definitely like the industrial part of town. Um, you know, a lot of shops, a lot of like, you know, metal foundry, like metal forgery stuff. You know, you see people who are like, you can hear the, the grinding noise of welding and like machining and all that jazz. Um, and Captain Roche drops you off in front of this old kind of, you know, not terrible, but very small mom and pop little garage. It looks like it's just a singular garage with like a little side office space to the right of it. And there's cats. <laughs> very hungry cats who can wait to be fed. Is the captain gonna... Well, actually, I just asked this. Are you gonna wait for us captain or gonna head back i'm gonna head back all right we're we're in an area where we can we can find like transportation right oh yeah central ward a hundred percent it has the best transportation cool. captain rose give us our phones back yes you guys have your phones back does he have tannis's phone he gives you guys his tannis's phone and brian's phone as well i'm gonna take tannis's phone and hand brian's to kel kel will pocket it as I as will I. All right. Wait. 
Does Michael have a lock on here? I should change this ringtone. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, Cal. I suppose you could try. Does he? That's a question. Does Tannis have a lock on his phone? Or Brian? Oh, no, Scott. Brian. Brian. Yeah. Yes. Does... <laughs> course, like, yes, of course I do. Yeah, Tannis would have a lock on his phone as well. Well, I'm not going to fiddle with Tannis' phone. <laughs> Maybe I can get the tech division to change the ringtone for him. What the fuck are you guys doing? I'm not, I am not doing anything to your phone. It's, he's trying to do Brian. Are you using police resources to prank me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, you know the tech division would be all for it. Connor, this is why I was like, let's just go watch Dynamite because they're fucking around with our phones <laughs> instead of saving our asses. I'm done. Just break my statue. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, just, Bye, guys. Push me Thanks over. I just, Fuck these I just nerds. Pat Kill on the shoulder and be like, we can think about that later. It is good to have some levity considering the circumstances. <sighs> yeah. Let's go, buddy. All right, you guys approach the garage. Um, you guys enter inside. Um, yes. Can we peek inside first? Is sure. it just like an open door? Uh, it's an open, like there's a door that leads into the garage section. As you kind of look in, it's very dusty. You don't need to make a perception check. You can see inside there's a bunch of parts on a shelf. There's a bunch of hanging tools. And in the middle, you see a motorcycle. I look to Kel as though just to sort of and look back, sort of like, should we call out? I assume there's a large metal door nearby. Yeah, the, you guys are in front of the door that leads into this establishment. Then Kel will ball up his fist and rap on it loudly. Okay. Connor. You hear a rasp on your door. Be there in a second. <clears throat> I'll stop doing whatever I was doing and I'll walk over to the uh, walk over to the door and open it up. Could you describe yourself to Kel and Gibby what they see? Absolutely. Uh, you both see a dark brunette haired dwarf with medium length slick black hair wearing a sheepskin jacket and a white tank top. Uh, he's wearing a pair of plain denim jeans underneath dark brown leather chaps uh, and steel tipped combat boots. Uh, he has a gray headband covering his forehead that does little to distract from his pierced eyebrows and deep blue eyes. His beard drapes down just above his belly button and he has two braids uh, that are, go all the way down from his mustache on either side of his mouth. Hey, how can I help you? Hello, I'm Kelzorin, and I'm a friend of Gordon. Um, Gordon, friend. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard Gordon talk about a dragon man, but... Uh, we're newer friends. Sort of squints. Uh-huh. He sort of extends a hand. Dalcom Brassboon. Lauren Gibby. Uh, Prince Division. Rampoo City to police, police Department. Ah. Uh, Prince Division. I heard you guys got... something. Depends if you mean our predecessors or us. Uh. But the answer is yes either way. Well, it's none of my business. So, like I said, how can I help you? Do you perhaps know the method or know anyone who does how to undo petrification? Uh, maybe. Why? Two of our friends were petrified during the course of an investigation. One of them had a little daughter. She doesn't deserve to lose her father. Ah, oh, right off the bat, you're bringing the kids into this. Yeah. All right, all right. Let me let me make a couple calls. I'll see what I can do. Just 
Why are you coming to me? The, we were told to. Yeah. The, By the, Gordon? Uh, Mac. Gordon and his friends, Mac. And again. Oh, right, of course. <sighs> All right. Come on inside, I guess I'll... <sighs> Maybe Tank can do something. Yeah, I'll give old Tank a call. Just, uh, grab a seat, I suppose. Wait one second. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing it for the kid. I barely know you people. That is fair. She'll appreciate it. I'm not going to appreciate it if it turns out you're lying to me. Hey, can I see your badges, by the way? Yeah, Gil yes, will immediately hand over his badge. Me too. Uh, yeah. Okay. <sighs> All right. He'll he'll walk over to his desk and he's got one of those old like rotary phones. Oh yeah, super dusty except, from lack of use. Except it's uh, except it's like got huge huge holes for his gigantic dwarf fingers, and he'll just. <laughs> The moment he's out of his shot, <laughs> Kel will turn to Gibby and say, that is why I mentioned that for me. As you guys are waiting in bit the garage of a dirty space. For a bit of a dirty tactic, Kel, but effective. Gibby and Kel, as you guys are kind of waiting in the garage space, watching the dwarf kind of doing his thing, you hear a little, eh, like a little squeak noise. Uh, roll perception? Yep, go ahead and roll perception. 14 12 You notice one of the mirrors on the motorcycle is like angling itself towards you uh, Like on its on its own Um you, Both of us both of us notice this? Yes, both of you notice. Um is there something to roll on that? You have no idea. Would detect magic do anything? You could attempt to detect magic if you wish. Sure, why not? Okay. As you kind of cast detect magic, you detect intense divination and intense conjuration magic coming from this motorcycle. Uh, it is one magical machine. Is it... I mean, more so than usual. Kel, is it... is it safe? It's not someone spying on us, is it? It's conjuration and divination, so... <sighs> Hard to say that divination could be... technically spy. Dalcom, as you make the phone call to Tank, the dial tone rings and rings and rings. Tank is not the most personable individual, um, and as it goes to message, you hear a voice go, Don't bother me! And it just kind of hangs up. You may leave a message after the tone. <laughs> Damn it. Tank, it's Dalcom. Look, I got a couple of weirdos coming in here. They're with the, they're with the Rampoon City Police Division, Prince Division, rather. Uh, and they need some help with a petrification and I don't know they they're friends of Gordon and they want some help you're the first person I thought of pick up or call me back whatever yeah you kind of slammed the thing down on the receiver they don't really known tank to answer phone calls but you know he'll wait and see I suppose if that's what you want to do <sighs> uh, Mr. Dalcom yeah uh call in go so Go ahead. The call didn't go so great. I'm waiting for him to call me back, but uh, we could just, you know, just sit and wait for an hour, I guess. <sighs> Okie dokie. I have a question, if I may. Okay. Fire away. Is that motorcycle magical? Yep. Be more so than usual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it is Trish! reading of intense divination. Come on in here. Like Trish, come in here. To the motorcycle? Yeah. 
Yeah, the motorcycle turns and turns itself on by itself and begins to like gently move towards the two of you like a curious dog. Oh. <sighs> oh, that is really cool. This is Trish. Uh, hi, Trish. Sorry, uh, I thought you. Sorry, I thought you were spying. The uh, nice mirror kind of turns back. Uh, it kind of like purrs uh, in response with the motor. She probably was. Don't really get a lot of new people out here. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm a little paranoid the these movie. days. Kind of weird they have never seen a Techromancer's chariot before, but... Uh, how Techromancer friend is typically sitting at the desk playing dubstep. Yeah. Ah. Typical. I deal with enough of them. That, that sounds about right. Yeah. Found this old girl in the junkyard and she was still kicking, so I fixed her up and now she won't leave me alone. Isn't that you right, Trish? You watch her see like gently rolls over to your foot and like kind of like stops right before hitting your running over your foot. <laughs> I just sort of give give the handle a good rev. Yeah, it kind of purrs and revs at that. So she's a bit different than most chariots, though. I can see that. So your friend is not available at the moment? Well, not exactly a people person. I don't do type. Yeah. Then again, most Loxodons I've met aren't really people persons. So, there's that. Amati, in my, where I came from, would I have, would I have ever seen a loxodon i feel like no. that'd be rare when gibby went can i roll on that history or yeah just history check would be it mm, 10 10 you've heard the name um you don't know a lot about them but you've heard they're like elephant people like they're walking talking elephants but they're very few and far between uh, i've never met one before huh. Yeah, they're kind of seclusive and not very personable, but Tank's good people when he wants to be. That's reassuring. Bing, 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 why are you bothering me, Brass Boots? You hear Tank's voice immediately just ring out on the phone. <sighs> Surprised you actually picked up. Look, I got some people over here. They know Gordon, and they need some help with dealing with some, one of their friends that got petrified. Bring him here. Uh, I just cover the receiver. Can you bring him to him? Uh... They are. He, Wait. he meant he meant you two, not. Yeah, I was the, gonna say. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right. Uh. Yeah. I can. Yeah, I can pick him up and take him to you, or unless like. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. I'll measure them out. Right. Um. Sure. Cool. Um, he hangs up. <laughs> see you soon, too, buddy. <laughs> Gordon's going to have to explain his definition of friends to me soon. Well, <clears throat> all right. Follow me, I guess. And he throws on his uh, dark brown sheepskin coat that sort of like rattles a little bit, like there's something heavy and metal on the on the inside of it. He hops I, up on... Can I roll inside on you to see what that is? Sure. Like? Yeah. I'm just curious. <laughs> 19. It's probably chain mail. Mm. You 
looking yeah. you preparing for a fight? I'm prepared for anything. Listen, yeah. in the courier business, anything can happen. You can never really be too careful. And some of the things that I take aren't, you know, necessarily they're pretty highly sought after and people like to have them. It's just nice to have protection. I mean, V can understand. Go will look yeah. down to his own chainmail. Uh-huh. Although I imagine your line of work is a great deal more dangerous than mine. Yeah, uh, seeing as you, how you've got a couple of petrified friends. I'm not envious. Sorry for your temporary losses. So long as it is temporary. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> and I'll hop up on Trish. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I'll drive to Tank's house and I'll I'll uh, leave there... them there via car. Uh, we don't have a car. I was going to say it's like... You don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> the captain left How us. did you get here? <laughs> yeah, the captain uh, dropped them off. Our the captain Why? dropped us off. Fine. Sorry. Ugh. Do I have like a, an attachable sidecar I can get? You do, yeah. <laughs> you do. You have a little you have money. Two? You, you have. have I'll just. One. You could easily have Gibby with you on the on the motorcycle, and, and but Cal has to go in the little sidecar. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'll just. Ponty. I'll just. Ponty, I have a request. Uh huh. Remember that image of the Rugadin in the Whisper of Go Go Mount? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Anything absolutely. like that for Cal? Yeah, it's like a it's like a, a giant man on like the little kitty ride that you have at yes. the grocery store. Just Same energy. Fitting. I want you to have the goggles too. Yes. Uh, safety yeah. first. When oh. you attach uh brass boots, when you attach the uh the little side car, Trish is kinda like you ever hear like a car like hit the brakes and rev at the same time? It's like a, uh, like kind of this really awful noise, like the stalling noise. You hear that from yeah. Trish, who's very much not a fan of the sidecar when it comes out. Hey, don't do that to your tires. Gonna have to replace those, too, if you keep that up. She's not happy with this? Nah, she's never happy when I tinker with her, but, you know. Sorry, Trish. Oh, it rubs again. Thank you, though. I treat her right, and she teaches, and she treats me like this. <laughs> oh. Women. <laughs> all right I'll, I'll like finish finish turning the crank ta-da um it's okay Gil if I will ride adjust with his you. goggles yeah and so that's fine just you know make sure you have a hold of me the entire time no seat belts means hi likelihood that you'll fly off if you're not grabbing on to something. No, I am. Um, I'm not interested in that. Slight Vietnam flashback to like the, <laughs> the Chimera fight where she almost ate pavement. Memories. Oh. So many memories. <laughs> yeah, she, she holds on to him nice and good and tight. All right, Almost a little have... uncomfortably so. You have to like lean I'll... down though, because he's a dwarf, you know. So it's like a little, little, little uncomfy, but it does work. I'll like ho I'll like hobble over to like a table of mine, and I'll grab like one of those big, ugly colored, round, old helmets with the goggles, and yeah. I'll just <laughs> onto Kel's head. It's not one of the ones right. that has like the the eye covering. It's like one of those like kind of like bike helmet style ones for because of this yeah. head shape on him. Old timey. Yeah, and Gibby, you get one as well. Where are your where are your helmets, everybody? Safety first. Thanks. How do those goggles even fit on his face? Concerning his eyes or side profile? They make goggles for dogs. There's hope for everyone. I don't know if that's insulting or not. It's it's just diverse. You know, there's a lot of ways you can make goggles. All right. As you guys roar out of the garage on this strange magical motorcycle with this new ally in tow, that's where we're gonna take a break. Ooh. Okay, Ar okay, Arkov. So Dutch oven, right? Don't no. He doesn't <laughs> need to know. What? I can explain it now. 
Is it something that's safe to explain on a stream? Oh yeah, it it's is, not that but bad. like, <laughs> it's just gross. It's not even that gross per se. It's just kind of, it's kind of rude. <laughs> Can I? Sure. <laughs> okay, it's just, it's just basically if you're like in bed with someone else, like just not not sexually, but just like if you're like sleeping in the said bed with someone else, if you fart under the covers and then take the covers and pull them over the other person's face. Oh. So they're basically <laughs> locked in with the smell of their fart. That's a Dutch that's, oven. That's mean. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go bathroom. Welcome into the halftime show on that little nugget. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. A <laughs> uh, hundred bits from TY2BP. I'm starting to think the reason why Durza prefers human women is because orcish ones don't see him as much of a man. <laughs> Uh, Faceless, thank you for the bits. Will we get to see uh, Dura, the orc explorer, again in the future? Oh my god. Dura, 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 the explorer. All right, I'm going to get some water. Bye. Me too. And I will be here. I will awesome. be here as well. Huh. What am I, chat? Finding the happy balance between I know Vote what you now mean. on your phones. I know that's not how that works. I'm finding the happy balance between being quiet and being off the fucking walls. Hi YouTube. You will never I see you. Hi YouTube comments. Oh god no, but it's so fun to mess with them. Mm hmm. Now Goblin is asleep and Hob is being loud. He literally Sounds was like yelling you... at me. He ran into a wall because I was he was meowing at me and then ran into like a wall because he was too busy meowing at me. And then was like, okay, I'll feed Flust you. Flustered bum with 200 bits. So how does it feel to be able to sit and listen to the other two children around the city while you answer that? I am going to threaten roll 20 again. Ah, all right. I love it. I'm just sitting here being a fan like all of you guys. I'm good. You guys forget, for those of you that are Unexpectables fans, there was an entire portion of an arc where Remy was a prisoner of war and I would have like 15 minute scenes <laughs> and that'd be it. <laughs> Said I get maybe two. I'm, I'm good. Sounds like a you problem, Burnout. DRK Gannon, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. I'm back. Welcome back. Oh. <laughs> well, too bad. 15 minutes since we're running with Yes, while they were with Zenrio. Yes. They were having the time of their lives in an underwater playground, and I was fucking getting PTSD. Arch Requiem with 100 bits. I am happy. You guys are playing, and that for the first time in weeks, I can actually watch live. Yeah, holiday weekend, freeing up my schedule. There was also 100 bits before that. Yeah, well, I was busy talking to somebody who's dumb. Uh, Cosmosis with 100 bits. RE, the Orc Mafia extortion is just taxes with more micromanagement. Change my mind. you think you were having Timmy fun under the sea? I, I hate you. <laughs> Ugh, smells like burger in here. It smells like a burger in here. Why? <laughs> I, I need this first. Uh, then with 
300 bits. I had an Inkling Connor repurposed his Fi Owen character from Lonnie's DMCA one shot, and then Trish happened. I read the message correctly. Perfect. Yes, a burger. I had a burger for lunch today, and now my whole room smells like it. Nice. Are people guessing what Connor's character is? I, yeah, I know what he likes. Yeah, I've seen Artificer a couple times. I can't say because I have insider information. Are we good to keep going? You guys good to go? Or are we still waiting on Sarah, I think, still right? Still waiting on Sarah. Uh, Volk, oh. 275 bits. To Monty, in any of your games, do you know what a Dullahan is? Oh, I know if what so, a Dullahan is, yeah. Yeah, could we ever see one in the future in any of your games? The only problem I have with the Dullahan is that it has a one-hit kill mechanic, which is kind of rough. And it's not, like, one-hit, like, unconscious. It's a one-hit kill. Um, so that... I mean, yeah, they chop your food head off. You had the Arcana off to touch the finger of death. That's not instant death, though. It's just a really high DPS attack. Yeah. Mac. Like the the, the Dula hand literally has an ability where if it like hits or goes through, it instantly kills you. Like you're instantly dead. Um and it's like a really it's like a double digit CR creature and it has that ability which is really really nasty. So you while like it is cool to be more like finger of death. You can, yeah, you can obviously tweak it. So that's that's something that's definitely available, but as a core concept creature in the Ravenloft book, that is what it does. And that's so. why it's in Ravenloft. Yeah, that's precisely why it's in Ravenloft. It's There's meant some to really... kill you. Yeah, it's really mean. Uh, Monty, Just real quick. Thank you for the 100 bits. Yes. Oh, God, I can't believe... Huh? Um, Can you mod our new mods? I Yeah, I'll do that afterwards. Someone just messaged me yeah. about that, and I responded with, we'll do that afterwards. Uh, okay Dusty Bone that. with 100 bits. Oh, God, I can't believe the red X fucking killed Tannis, just like Remy. Yep. Lamal. Yeah, I had, to, I had to find that. I was just like, oh, I gotta find that X. Fuck. Uh, the Percocizer with 100 bits episode title chipping away at the stone cold truth. Uh, Volk with a bit. I meant as in NPC. Uh, Dulahan is an NPC? Yeah, that's up. possible, but. Hey, Bosco. Why would they want to help anybody? What do you want, Sarah? Oh, don't be rude. I'm going to be making brownies later if you want some. Uh, Monty. I'll, give you, I'll give you a small yes. one if you're worried about it. One of our new mods is memed appropriately. I put oh, it in the meme channel. Oh god. Ooh, let me see, let me see. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Of course, of course they did. Courtesy of Zen Lita. Oh, Thank you, Zen. You're, you're a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, that's a word for it. Alright, you guys ready to keep going? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Kel and Gibby, as you guys ride out. Just because you mentioned it earlier, can Kel be hanging his head over the side of the car? Tongue out, mouth open. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Just smiling in the wind. Uh, He's usually stuck you, inside a car. He doesn't get to feel the wind much. Uh, go ahead for me and roll a survival check for me, Brass Boots. Okay. Oh, you're still the best dad driver. I ain't got no kids. <laughs> nice. That's a 15. Easy enough. You manage to drive through the city streets of the Central Ward, seeing all manner of characters throughout the city. You know, you see a centaur currently crossing over the road. You see a bunch of kids, you know, human, half-orc, and elven kind of all hanging out and kind of doing the similar sort of dancing that you see Clara do before. 
Uh, you see people selling papers. You see people like going in and out of different establishments, like you know, convenience stores, and you know, you watch as like uh, a tabaxi and a human leave a convenience store. The tabaxi immediately like drops their drink and it sprays everywhere, and you hear them go no as you guys drive past. Hmm. Can I roll perception check? Sure, absolutely. In the back of Gibby's mind, she's just thinking about the fact that that guy was watching us leave, and now it's like. Ugh. 19. 19? You don't see anything. You look up above. You do see a couple dragons flying between the buildings. Um, but as you look around and you look up on top of any roofs as you guys come to stops, you do, don't notice anybody looking at you. There are a few stares from people looking at Kel, who's a little too big for the little sidecar, but <laughs> that's, that's part of the course. And as the sun begins to set, you eventually make your way into another similar uh, industrial space. This one having a bit more character and uh, brass boots, you know that, you know, having a motorcycle here is great because you can off-road it a little bit. You can go in the alleyways a little bit easier as you kind of duck and weave your way throughout these newspaper, po like plastered alleyway streets with various different individuals kind of talking and laughing. A lot of uh, back alley wizards kind of reside in this space. A um, couple of people for the nickname have this place called The Reach because a lot of people here reach for the stars and fail miserably and fall back to the ground. Oh. Yeah. Um, mostly in the arcane practitioner end of things. <clears throat> but as you begin to make your way, uh, you find the unmarked building of Tank's workshop. You hear various different grinding noises coming from within. Uh, I'll pull up. And I'll... Uh, pull out the kickstand and uh, all right, here we are. <clears throat> I'll hop off. Right. One, two. You hop. Yep. Scale of one to ten. How plastered is Kale's face with bugs? Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty plastered. I, uh, you also got some bird poop on you, just you know, oh. from pigeons. Oh, great. Kale doesn't yeah. notice because his scales are white already. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of bugs, Damn. a couple moths. I just look at Kel and be like, um. Kelly, you got a little something on your, um... Yeah, something, wait, what? Uh, um, uh, never mind. I do imagine it's just dripping down the side of his head and doesn't <laughs> notice. Oh, uh, <laughs> That's uh, horrible. Uh, As you guys are standing there having that conversation and Trish comes to a quiet standstill, uh, you hear like a little like a whirring and a clunk, and you watch as the little sidecar gets like just detached on its own, <laughs> almost like a kid kicking off their boots after a long day. <laughs> hey, we're gonna need that to get back. <sighs> you know, if you take it off, it's I'm only gonna have to put it back on again. <sighs> Don't give me any lip. <sighs> You begin to hear a kind of sounding of slated metal moving and shifting as you watch as the garage is being pulled manually upwards on this building. And you see, framing the space, a brick house of Aloxodon. Uh, very dark gray skin, tired looking eyes, large tusks. Uh, on which each hangs these, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, Loxodon are elephant people. Um, and he is definitely like a, his fingertips are kind of blackened with grease and oil, uh, wearing a big kind of apron style outfit with a sort of jumpsuit for managing vehicles. Notably on his like big tusks that he has, there's a series of like hooks on them and you see hanging from his tusk are all the different tools, like the different like wrenches and stuff just hanging from his tusks, like decorations almost as he kind of lifts up with his trunk, lifts up the uh, the garage door, he kind of narrows his eyes and stares out and looks towards you, brass boots and nods and goes, Dalcom. Tank. Friends of Gordon, huh? That's what they tell me. Well, don't be strangers. Get on in here and don't touch anything. Yes, sir. Sort of. I sort of motion for them to go on ahead. 
Gibby, having never seen one of these types of species before, species, creatures, I don't know what sounds like. Nice. Rude. It's just sort of like, whew, okay. Would Cal have ever oh, seen a Loxodon in the Dragon Ward? Yeah, there's a few there. Um, I mean, the buildings there are more meant for Dragonborn, so given your size, it makes a bit more sense. But I mean, you've probably seen one in your passing. They definitely are like a, like a, mm -hmm, like kind of like turn heads for sure. Hmm. Mm. How he tall kind of is he compared to Kel? Same height, probably. Ooh, Kel yeah. has a friend! Yeah. <laughs> oh god, I can't wait. Um, as you guys enter, he kind of ignores you, and, like, he walks over to Trish, um, and he kind of looks at her and kind of turns to you, Dalcom, and goes, you need to give her more oil. Hey, don't tell me. Don't give me advice on repairing bikes. I'll give you advice on repairing chariots. <sighs> He kind of looks, breaks his eye contact and makes his way. The inside of his shop is just floor to ceiling. There are parts everywhere. Uh, currently in the center, you see a rather, oh God, fuck me. I'm going to do this to myself, aren't I? Oh you no! You see a <laughs> rather nice looking car. Um, it's kind of like an old, um, like an old Cadillac kind of looking car. Mm -hmm. And it's, Definitely shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Um, it's definitely seen better years. It's been rusted in places. It's got like a bunch of like the, the front bumpers missing. Um, and one of the windows in the back is shattered. But it's got like the it's got the fins in the back of it, and it's it's nice. It's kind of like an it's hard to tell where the rust is like starts and the paint job begins because the paint is also really aged as well but it is a nice little vintage car that just seems to have been left to the wind um, and currently you see that he's got a pile of tools and a pile of various different parts around and uh, you know he kind of goes over and turns off his radio and he kind of turns towards you brass boots and he goes close the garage door I'll uh, is there like a button or like, or is it just one of those things? You it's like a chain. You... It's like a chain. You close it that way. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just grab it and, and take it down. Okay. Uh, as you do that, you watch as a bunch of lamps in the space, just like on their own, kind of bend their necks and turn on. Um, almost like the Pixar style lamp. They kind of turn and look towards you quizzically and then turn back towards tanks work just kind of like oh what's that oh back to work are you a technomancer too sir that's the term for it i uh well um uh I i'm lauren gibby and this is um guild zorin at your service officers of the prince division is what i was told Gil yes. will hold out his badge I will as oh. well. He doesn't yes, even sir. look at them. He just looks at you too. Right. Well, your friends have been turned to stone, is that right? Yes, By Medusa, yes. You watch as he steps over and leans on one of the workbenches and kind of crosses his arm. He's ripped, by the way. Like, he is like, he's not like super buff muscular man, but he's like a big, like, you know, arms thick as tree trunks kind of guy. Um, and he kind of crosses his arm. For you, it's not for show. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So um, like he got... properly buff, as opposed to like bodybuilder buff, where it's sort of yeah. Like, yeah, that's that's yeah. not yeah. really what it means to be like properly buff. Powerlifter farm... build as well as uh, as opposed to bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. farmhand bodybuilder kind of look to him, and like you can definitely see like the veins in his hands and stuff. And his hands are just dirty. Like you get the sense that there's no point cleaning them. I mean, he's just gonna get them dirty again. Um, he kind of leans up against one of the workbenches and kind of goes, I could probably help your friends out. I'd need a component to do so. But I have a, ma a way with material and immaterial. That being said, I don't know you folk. What, what would it take for you to help us? 
A favor in kind. What That's that what be? you will. It goes without saying. He kind of gives a side glance towards you, Brass Boots, and then turns back to Gibby and uh, Kel, and he kind of uh, leans himself up. And he goes, it goes without saying that each Tecromancer has a way with machines. And he brings a hand over to the car and kind of places his heart across. And you hear the car actually makes like a weird whining noise. Like it doesn't quite work. Like it actually responds like Trish did. Tecromancers value the nature of invention the adventure of the invention of electronics be a computer or vehicle or machine or anything in between we have a way of hearing their spark in their heart and lately i've been having nightmares what sorts of nightmares A Tecromancer chariot is trapped, and it needs to get out of where it is. It's a cry for help. And the identifying landmarks? Grab my notes. It's a place called Frank's Auto Shop. In the Devil Ward. Would I know about this auto shop? Uh, roll a history check. Oh boy. Uh, 13. 13. Um, you knew of it. Um, when the orcs took over the ward it was kind of condemned the automotive person left just a giant shift in power made a bit of a vacuum which made it very difficult to run it so you would have probably known of it it was just a simple shop you know ah remember that place the orcs ran them out when they took over yeah but it sounds like the orcs don't own the shop i've been seeing images of a creature wearing chain all over its body can you can I roll Icona on that? See if I get religion. All religion. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm actually proficient in that. Thirteen, better than I expected. Mm, Never mind. Nat twenty. Natural twenty. I would say probably brass boots wouldn't really know. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a chain devil. Gibby's skin runs cold. Ugh. I know what that is. What is it? Sounds like a chain devil. Chain devil? Uh, what would I know about that with that role, Monty? Chain devils, let me grab my information because that is a very good role. I'll give you additional information on that. Woohoo! I mean, it is the devil demon lord, so it makes sense. <sighs> Man, I can't mm -hmm. believe we have to go back in there. I mean, we have to anyway. That is what our friends are. Oh. <laughs> right. I keep forgetting the stronghold is in that, that ward. As you say that, uh, Tank kind of turns and goes, your friends are in the devil ward? Well, then you're definitely going to have to prove yourself if you want me to go into that goddamn place. You're, you're going to come with us? We're not you moving a bunch of statues to me. They're, oh God. So chain devils, I'm just gonna get this information for you now. Mm -hmm. uh, they wear chains like a shroud, so you never see their face. They love to drive lesser creatures before them. Um, it can animate chains uh, and they act as sadistic jailers and torturers. They relish, uh, they relish in giving, inflicting pain to other living things and they exist to torment. Gibby shudders. They're, they're really bad news. They, they enjoy inflicting pain and, and anguish. They, it's kind of their MO. They're not, would they be considered like just chaotic evil, basically? They're lawful evil. Um, they exist to, to do what they need to do. They're bad news. 
if your, you watch this, if your chariot is being hurt, they're enjoying doing it. No doubt it's not so much they're being hurt, it's so much that they're sitting there not being what they should be. Living out there free on the road. Good life. Hmm. Crying out to be born. Frank's auto shop is in a place called Angel's Fall. If you went there directly, you'd get ripped apart. Your best bet is to go through an old abandoned subway. It was condemned after the Sky Train came about, and it's magical means. It's a place called Catrail. You ask around, you could probably find it. If you're worried about the Orc Mafia, they don't have any stake in that place. It's where all the remainders who don't want to be ruled over by that Baron Jamar hide out in. Um, Full disclosure. Cal yeah, Gibby looks at Kel and is sort of like, we better. We must prove ourselves to you. The first step of that is complete honesty. Our friends are currently being kept safe by Baron Dramar within his stronghold. Well, I don't give a shit about Baron Dramar, but the people there might, so you might want to hold your tongue with that information and maybe avoid being so honest. That information is for you and you alone, as is this. Gail will hand... oh, hold out. The three diamonds worth, uh, 100 GP each. Yeah. He takes them. His, again, you are of a similar height, but his hands are, like, massive uh, as he takes these three. It looks like almost Skittles in his hand as he takes the three of them. These are the components you need, yes? Mm-hmm. I'm too weak to cast the spell myself, but I know of it. I'll grind these up. You bring, Meg, you bring me back that chariot, and I give you your spell. Deal. We'll be done. All right. Brass boots. Yep. Keep an eye on these kids. I'll pay you. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. He extends oh, out all right. to you, Cal. Yeah, we'll take his hand and shake it. Drake blood. He reaches and extends a hand to you, Gibby. Thank you. Thank you so much. Little lady, he reaches out his trunk to you, Brass Boots. I'll, I'll, like, fist bump his trunk. <laughs> he kind of snorts at that, but he agrees. Mm -hmm. Best of luck. <laughs> and from, um, from outside, uh, Trish will go... <laughs> <laughs> As night she came, says goodbye too. The oil, brass boots. Right, right. And as you guys assess and figure out where you're going, Bryant. Your body seized up. And as creatures were bearing down at you, and then all of a sudden, you're in the lobby? Your body begins to crack and kind of come to as your petrification ends. Stone curse petrification lasts only 24 hours. Means that vampire's coming undone too. Oh god, is she still in the truck? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Medusa problem will solve itself. But, uh, no, I don't. She she got hit with her own thing, so she shouldn't. Oh no, I mean the vampire's in the truck with the Medusa. Uh, yeah. He thinks a vampire won't take too kindly. But, uh, Bryant, you are kind of, like, you kind of, uh, you feel, first of all, I mean, it goes on saying, you feel stiff, 
Um, the other thing is that you are feeling very sick to your stomach. I also probably have fatigue, and I haven't slept in over 24 hours. Mm, it doesn't affect you in that way. I'll double check that. But because you weren't actually, like, there, it doesn't apply any exhaustion. But you were in the state you would have would, would have been in in that fight. You do not gain the benefit of a long rest. Yeah, you're just, you were just petrified, so you're fine. We're in a no room exhaustion. or we're in a hallway? You're in, uh, like, a dining space. Like, it's clearly a place, like like I mentioned, the sort of wedding venue-esque space that Baron Dermar uses for his private parties. Whoa. Oh, hello? What's whoa? Someone's Buzzies. microphone is buzzing. Could be mine. I think I it is idea. yours. Yeah, it is yours. Bosco? Yep. Sorry, I was yeah. waiting for everything to get sorted out. Uh, am I next to Tannis? You kind of crane your legs and you look over and you see Tannis still petrified. Do I know that we were petrified at about the same time? Did I see anything happen or do I just you know did. that he's there? You knew that you... I would say in the fight you would have turned around quickly and saw that Tannis got turned to stone because you turned to stone after Tannis. Got it. Yeah. Then I'm going to wait for about five minutes for him to essentially do the same thing. You wait for five minutes and nothing happens. Fucking damn it. <sighs> Come on, Tannis. Wait another five minutes. Okay. Nothing happens. Do I have my phone? You check for your phone and you remember that you gave it to Captain Roche. I'm gonna wait five more minutes. Nothing happens. Tannis, what the fuck are you doing? We need to get the hell out of here. Tannis! No response. He's got a new set of sunglasses, though. <laughs> Tannis, if this is a fucking martial arts thing, I swear to God, I'm gonna fucking kill you. For fuck's sake, come on! Hey, you hear a voice on the other side of the door. Is someone in there? Fucking shit. The door. Brian will go quiet. <laughs> Opens up and you see leading their head in is an orc. Not one you've ever seen before. Can I hide behind Tannis? Can I can I do one better? Do you want to go back into your pose when you're petrified <laughs> and stay in place? Sure. That's how right. dumb this orc is. Oh my god. Go ahead and roll a deception check. Oh man. Oh, 22. No. Oh, my oh my god! My god. <laughs> the orc kind of looks around the room. Huh, must have been the wind. And closes the door. <laughs> What is going on? Dennis, what are you doing? You got fucking stone before me. Let's go. Brian is going to take off his coat. Okay. And he's going to start walking around. He's going to make a lap around the table. Okay. And then he is going to throw it as hard as he can at the base of the statue. Your jacket? Yeah. Okay, you do. You throw the jacket and it like splats against Tannis' feet. Wake up, you son of a bitch! That's... The door immediately kicks open and the same orc goes, It wasn't the wind! And he immediately puts on <laughs> brass buckles. <laughs> the lights... <laughs> Flicker on, and you watch as three very perplexed-looking orcs just, like, look around the room and then see you in the corner without wearing your jacket. And they go, oh, hey, one of them got better. <laughs> You're, um, uh, what was your name? Human name. Oh, shit. Brian? Uh, 
Hey, you okay? I swear to whatever God you believe in, if you don't shut that fucking door, I'm gonna castrate you. Okay, roll an intimidation check. Ten. They gently close the door and leave. <laughs> Tannis, who the fuck is gonna deal with an FNA? Hey? Come on, man. The door gently <laughs> opens up, and you see leaning in through the door comes Baron Dramar. Fuck. The fuck do you want? He doesn't say anything, and he just kind of walks over to you. And he hands you a cell phone. Gibby and Kel have left to go find a cure for both of you, but it seems only one will be necessary. Brain will take the phone. Do you think yourself in a good space to drive on your own, or shall I get you a chauffeur? I don't need your fucking help. That's what happens when you help me. Get out of my face. He says nothing and turns and leaves. He is uh, going to pick up his coat, and he is just going to start to slink away towards the elevator. Okay. The orcs that were guarding the door, like, their backs are pressed up against the wall, and they're just kind of, like, stationary, like, expressionless guards, like, not even trying, like, avoiding eye contact respectfully. As you make your way past the Baron's office, you can see him currently getting back into the seat as the door closes. And as you turn the left corner... You kind of peek to the right because that's kind of where Amelia is. Um, no one's there. You make your way to the elevator. There is still a stereo tape to the wall playing music. Sounds about right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. <laughs> Gonna go down. Okay. You get the keys to a vehicle. What would you like? I'm going to ask you. I was going to specify, but what would you like? The fastest thing that's there. Guess who else is getting a motorcycle then? Damn, Bryant would look really good on a motorcycle too. With honestly. the coat? Yes. Damn. Uh, it's not like Trish, though. Uh, Trish is kind of like a, to my knowledge, a little bit more like, um, I'll have to put words in Connor's mouth. What, what kind of motorcycle is Trish? Connor? Sorry, I, was, I muted myself to fix my microphone. Uh, Trish is actually modeled after the... Uh, she is modeled after a... 20... Uh, a 2020 Triumph 3 rocket. You can go ahead and Google that to see what it looks like. Uh, it is... It's colored in black and maroon. Oh, yeah, it looks good. Um, the motorcycle that you get, Brian, is more of like a sports motorcycle, like one of those sort of slick, modern motorcycles. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so like a... Um, 
I don't like that name. I, I'm trying to find names, and I just, I... I don't like the name Crotch Rocket. That just doesn't sound right to me. Um, <laughs> you know, something like a term. It is, yeah. Like, something like a Kawasaki, like, motorcycle, if that makes sense. Ooh. Yeah. Sports motorcycle. Very sporty. Um, and as you rev off, do you call your friends first? I'm going to call Kel specifically. Okay. Kel, as you are finishing up with kind of, like, you know, tank and assessing the situation, meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Kel will answer. Uh, hello? Hey, Rex. Michael? Michael! Gibby looks up. What? Tannis is still stone. I, um... I just left the compound. Where are you? And we, uh... We are in central water right now, getting ready to head back to the Finn district. We found someone who can help, but yeah, we need to deal with the devil first. Piece of cake. I'm on my way. Just tell me where. It was Frank's automotive, yes? You can't meet up there. That's like where you need to get to. Um, you'll probably need to find a mutual place to meet up before heading in that direction. Where would that be? Oh, I know. Can we meet up at the little knickknack store? With that nice old lady, the toy shop, where Kel got all that, all those stuffed toys. <laughs> sure, if that's where you want to meet up. Yeah, that's where the orcs walked in, getting their uh, protection money that one time, remember? That's right, yeah. Sure, sure. Okay, devil work, you guys meet up there. You guys drive out. Um, again, poor Trish has to get that little sidecar bolted in. But eventually you guys make your way and meet up together. So we're, we're together now? Yeah. For the sake of brevity, you guys meet up together. You can't meet up at Frank's because that's like, getting to Frank's is going to be difficult based on what you've learned so far. As, yeah, as soon as Gibby sees Bryant, she just jumps off the cycle and gra runs to him and just grabs him up in a hug. Kel will do the same, but he will pick both of them up in a bear hug. Bryant doesn't hug either one of you. He's very limp. Kel will squeeze harder. Are you okay? No. So, you, who the hell cares, Jesus? You said Thomas did not wake up. Just gonna shake his head now. Must have been because it was Ziara. It was the statues that got you. If it is any consolation, I ripped its heart out. Actually, is there some of its blood still on Bryant? Because you said specifically it splattered Bryant. Uh, it would have fallen off with, like, the outer shell of the stonework. Ah. So, yeah, ah. unfortunately not. No more stone ketchup. No more stone ketchup. Gibby will let go and just sort of... It's that thing where she sort of just pats his shoulder a little motherly. It's just like... I called Mama Rigigi. She's going to take Tannis' daughter for a while. Nefane doesn't know. How do you feel about tackling a chain devil? I'd prefer to take its head off. I'm down with that. Oh, um, this is, um, she turns to, uh, to Brass Root. Brass Boot? Yeah, Brass Boot. Yeah. Hey, uh... Dalcom, Dalcom Brass Boot. I take it you were one of the ones that we were gonna unstone? Yeah, ass, pain in the ass. Stay the fuck out of our way. Oh, I'm can't do that, I'm afraid. Oh. I'm coming with you. Trish growls easy. at that one. Easy. Oh. Easy. A man's been through a lot, Trish. Settle down. Your fucking motorcycle talks. Talks is a Yeah, I can understand her, but like yeah, yeah. Okay. Point is, I I can't stay out of your way because I'm coming with you. Brian, he's, he's here to help Michael. Yeah, we're going into dangerous territory, and well, we are down a person. 
fine. You get yourself killed, I don't have to save you. That's... I understand completely. <laughs> hey, Monty. Yeah? Can I be a little shit? Absolutely. Oh, please do! Kel's gonna walk up to Trish, place a hand on her side, and cast tongues. Oh, okay. Oh! <laughs> now when she speaks, we can understand Trish. For an hour. Well, friends, a creature you touch the ability to understand any spoken language here so you can understand motorcycle. <laughs> we all can. It's, it's technically audible. We're blowing spell slots for this? Yes! <laughs> this is who I am! Oh my god. Wait, I didn't realize. Hold on. Tongues is nice. Moreover, when the creature speaks, any creature that knows at least one language and can hear the target understand what it says. I thought that was only one person. Nope. Any creature. Oh, Connor, we've been running tongues wrong on Panic the whole fucking time. Yeah, no, tongues is amazing. Yeah, you should, if you cast it on, an, you would cast it on an individual creature and then everyone, as long as they can speak an language, understands it. Yeah, I cast it on myself, and then other people understand me. Oh, okay, never mind. I'm an idiot. We've been running it right. Don't worry. Dis disregard. Okay, sorry. I thought we were running it wrong. I was going to be really embarrassed there, nope. but okay. Nope. Hey, Connor's only ever cast it on himself. This is me casting on another creature so we can all you understand. You are. Him. Fair enough. Now we can understand Trish. <laughs> you I listen to Trish, and Trish says, he's not riding in the sidecar. I don't want to ride in your sidecar. It's a shitty sidecar. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I love that. It's finally happening. I'm going insane. I want uh, to run this man over. <laughs> Take your best shot, sweet cheeks. Whoa! Hey! All right. No. Let's. We're all in this together. Uh, you can understand her too? Okay. Magic shit. I get it now. It's a little weird. Please don't cast any more spells on my chariot. I'm sorry. It's just... I want to be no. her friend and I couldn't understand her. I understand that, but it's freaking me out. What do you mean it's freaking you out? You, you can, like, talk like people can, and I can... It's a little, it's a little odd, is all I'm saying. Like, you do the thing where you go, and, you know, I can understand that. I get your feeling, but. Mm. Right, so. Your friend. Devil Demon District. Frank's Auto Shop. Yes, we have a chain devil to kill. Right. Uh, you are all police officers. I assume you have combat training. Cool. Um. I assume you can handle yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be fine. Oh, he'll be fine. <laughs> I, just get, I just give, like, the gas tank a little <laughs> pat on the side. Tink, tink. We'll be fine. Turn to Brian. Brian, I know you're pissed. But make sure you channel it constructively for this, okay? He's just gonna turn his back to you and get on the motorcycle. <sighs> okay. Actually, Ooh. now with the third person, how, how much room do we have? Do I, I need guess to Gibby's going to have to sit in Kel's lap. <laughs> yeah, I just got to clamber well, no. up and clamber Are you lap. getting on Trish? Yeah, they're going to get in Trish. Oh, wait, you have a, you have a motorcycle. You have a motorcycle, right? I didn't yeah. say you could ride with me. <laughs> <laughs> so is this... Oh, he... no no doubling up. All right. Um, well. Follow us, Brian. I'm going to rev the motorcycle in Trish's face. I'm gonna have to put the, the I'm gonna have to put the sidecar back on. I hate this. I know you do. I know you do. Sorry, Trish. How about how about when all this is over, I'll give you a nice waxing and a nice polishing. How's that? There's a bit of silence and then 
I'd love that. All right. And it's Did settled. Mr. Think also say something about the oil? Yeah, what? about Not that you. oil. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Trish is, Trish is now Alexa. Uh, So, right, Frank's auto shop. Think well, I might know where that is. It sounds like we're going through the cut, the trail, right? Yep. Angels Fall, I believe it was. That's right. So to clarify, Frank's auto shop is in Angels Fall. Um, everybody, roll history checks for that. Nick. Uh, Ooh. Six. Ooh. Would would this have anything to Thirteen. do with? Would this have anything to do with a uh, stone? No. Unfortunately, <laughs> can't use Damn it! Damn it. <laughs> stone and Ah, beans. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I'll just okay. roll it normal. Seven, seven. God, we're okay. fucking stupid. <laughs> I guess. Well, <laughs> Brian, we Brian rolled pretty well. No, um, you would have known this. Um, just general research and you guys if you guys you know looking into the orc mafia and all that jazz honestly gibby getting a two is very unfortunate because out of everyone you would probably know the best um but as you guys kind of you know think about it and pound your heads together and do a little bit of you know ar um arcane searching on the internet um the angels fall is where all the devils went after baron dramar took over the ward oh, it is great. teeming with devils so the cut trail is actually a subway system that actually goes underneath Angel's Fall where the devils don't go um, and should have ways out to get you to specific locations to avoid as much confrontation as possible, which is why Tank recommended it. Probably a good thing, too, because Gibby would be like candy to them. Ugh. So that leads the question, why don't they go into the subway system? Because is there something really bad down there? <laughs> That's a bit of a loose end that you don't know the answer to. Mm. <laughs> Gelatinous cube. Are we there yet? <laughs> well, so, are we there yet? Who would like to navigate trying to find their way there? I suppose I'll do it. I think I have the best chance out of all of us. You right, can't so escape it no matter guidance. what you do. Oh boy. Whoa, Listen. that's tingly. That feels a little weird. Damn. Uh, nice. That's a 22 plus the D4. Plus. Uh, is a 24. Well, it would have been 24 either way, but one was a natural 20. But I don't get it. Nice. As you guys drive around uh, in back into the Devil Demon Ward, um, Gibby, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. 17. Woo! Okay. Uh, you don't notice anything. As you guys are driving, um, you were like, you're thinking about it, um, Dalcom. You're like, cut trail, cut trail. And you're like, cut rail. You managed to find an area where the rail cut off, like ended. Um, and you see a, you know, set of stairs that lead down into a darkened subway system interior. It's very strange. The Skytrain is very bright and clean and is magically maintained. No one knows where it came from or how it's, you know, managed. It drives on its own and it, it exists as it is. Um, this entire system is underground uh, and has been untouched for ages. And as you guys roll up to the uh, Catail, as it's called, the Catrail, um, you guys dismount your bikes and see double staircases leading down. Not completely in disarray, uh, mm -hmm. but clearly not managed. Brian's going to march down them. Okay. You're leading ahead. Who wants mm -hmm. to follow Brian? Go, yeah, we'll follow. I'll Go follow behind. behind. I'll follow. Okay. Um, I'm actually, gonna uh, I'm going to stop Brian. Brian, wait. What? Don't need to go into this half-cocked. Let me cast Detect Magic so we know what's coming. I don't give a shit what's coming. God, she's gonna slap him. 
He's going to barely react, but he'll hit him. Or she'll hit him. Bryant, stop acting like this. Do you want the rest of us to get killed? Fine. But we cannot go into this dangerously. Like, we have to be careful. And be careful. You too. Please. Well, I can see that tensions are running a little high, so maybe I can help put everybody at ease a little bit. Um, my specific skill set is built around keeping people safe. So I think no matter what we run into down there, I think we'll be all right. You guys handle the magic stuff. Me and this guy, and he'll just, uh, he'll lightly, like, pat Bryant on, on the shoulder. Or as, high, or as high as he can get. Side, yeah, you're a little, yeah. <laughs> Me and him, we'll handle the physical stuff. Brian is gonna look down at you and just glare at you when you touch him. <sighs> Appreciate it. Right. Give me ten minutes. I'm gonna put up detect magic. Okay. okay. You take your time. Let me get Trish touch. down these stairs. <clears throat> I will stay here, and if you need me, you know how to call me. <sighs> Yeah, but I really wanted to see you come down the stairs. Call this me. This bit is need. over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scene ended. All right. So we got Dalcom and we have Bryant heading down first, and then Gibby with Detect Magic in the middle, and I'm going to say Kel at the end. Um, sure. I'm also going to bring up mage armor. Okay. Easy enough. I need you to roll for me 2d20s just for your wild magic surge. 2d20s? Even with the ritual yeah. cast? Yeah. Oh. Can I roll them together? Just roll one first. We'll start with the detect magic. All right. Fine. Okay. And then mage armor. Another one. Oh. Okay. Natural totally 20. Fine. Ooh. All right. You guys make your way down the stairs, and it is dark. Um, I believe Dalcom is the only one who has dark vision, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. I yeah. do have dark vision. Uh, before before we go down there, uh, Dalcom is going to draw out from like one of one of Trisha's leather pouches. He's going to draw out several things. Uh, he uh, puts like a a big like. A uh, lacquered wood shield on his wrist that appears to be very old fashioned. Uh, he draws out a long sledgehammer and he hoists it over his uh, shoulder, and then he straps on a heavy crossbow that slings over his back. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> let's get going. You come prepared. I always come prepared. All right, you guys make your way down. The thing that hits you immediately as you make your way down these tunnels is the smell. We've been it's in the not, waste treatment plant. We can handle it. Oh, yeah, it's way better than the waste treatment plant. But it does smell like... It kind of smells like wet paint, which is weird. Like fresh, wet paint. Huh. Does and it, it is... Sorry, go ahead. Does it look like there's been new painting done recently? As you go over and you kind of gently touch the walls, nope, everything's dry. Hmm. The stairs eventually end and open up into sort of like a waiting area. You see like smashed old benches that have just been eaten away from time. You even notice a couple rats scatter as you guys make your way down. There's like an old newsstand that is just like, you know, has graffiti all over it. The old newspaper stands have just been smashed inwards and whatever's inside has just come, you know, turned to rot. So is it just a straight shot? Yeah, it just keeps going down. It looks like it's going down towards like the, the terminal where you would go. Yeah, you just keep going. Okay. If Dal comes the only one with dark vision, should he be leading the way? I assume he's up front with Bryant, so. Because it gets, like, 
like pitch black. Like, also, to Gibby a, like, has the glasses, so she could always put those on. That is true. I, I guess mm-hmm. I will. Um, I'm I'm in front of Kel, right? Yeah, Kel's in the rear. I assume. All right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you guys proceed forward, you don't see anything, but you begin to hear things. Voices. A lot of voices all kind of talking. Oh. Roll perception. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I will do this too. Uh, seven. Eleven. Six. Okay. As you guys... Make your way, you walk past a certain point, and then you hear movement behind you. Yeah, look. You turn around and look, and you see two cobalts. One red, uh, another one kind of like a sort of like off green color. Um, they kind of stop and go, hail friends. Hello there. Hey, Hello. Uh, welcome to Cut Trail. You, you first timers, returners. First timers. Ah, okay. Well, if you're first timers, um, we're willing to give information and uh, tours if you're interested. Courtesy of Varus, the generous. I narrow my eyes. For how much? Oh, just a paltry sum. One gold per tour guide. And these point towards each other. They look kind of like teenager aged. These two kobolds are definitely not old kobolds. You can take us a safe way. Um, we can tell you about Katrail, but safety is all about your behavior, really. Brian is going to take two gold pieces out of his pocket. And he's going to throw one at each of their heads. Ah. <laughs> they kind of scramble and they take it. They go, okay, yeah, right this way. Um, mind the ones I can't see. Yeah, there's stuff on the ground, so come on down this way. Unless you have any more useful information, don't talk unnecessarily. Otherwise, um, the one will be with a sword. Oh, 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 okay. They kind of give each other a bit of a look. There's no need for violence. That's the yes. sort of stuff that can get you in trouble here. And that's important information. We don't mean any harm. We just need to pass through somewhere. Certainly. Come on in. Yeah, as, you guys make, as you guys make your way down, you now see lights. Very ambient lights, um, some of which are flickering. Neon lights, clearly repurposed from old shops. It is a... You're not sure what this is. There's shops, there's actual stores beneath the ground where there used to be probably old restaurants that are now like built up like stores. There is lodging that has been built up. You see a lot of kobolds, um, Durgar, kind of uh, moving around, seemingly working on the rails, uh gnomes deep gnomes um and there's drow here as well and something you haven't seen before that are kind of like keeping to themselves and kind of keeping an eye on things are these very strange almost like sasquatch like long limbed um lizard like creatures um with big fanged faces and sort of narrow cat like eyes um they're physically quite large um and when you do get kind of close to some of them, they get out like they let out this really rank odor. They smell quite a bit, but it's more like a wet dog smell. It's not like you know devastating. Um, and they kind of you know keep an eye on you. They don't seem to be hostile, but they're definitely like you know new faces, new dangers potentially. It is a thriving underground city here of neon lights, and you even see like there's some little little gnome kids kicking a soccer ball throughout. This Aww. is Catrail. It is a place for nobodies. The ones who are looking at us warily. He will wave mm-hmm. in his usual fashion. Uh, the creature kind of cocks their head and like reaches up a hand and like mimics it and waves at you and then brings their hand back in. Um, anyone who wants to can roll a history check on what these oh creatures boy. are. Oh mm. boy. 16. Nice. 13. Bright. Oh, he's not going to roll. Fair yeah, enough. He's role playing. Um, Kel, these are Quagoths. They're underdark creatures. Oh, we saw one of the party, didn't we? You did, yes. 
Oh, I remember. Was that the one who like ran the shipping, the fishing company or whatever? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was like a kind of a prim, weird prim version of one of those. So. Yeah, Kel made friends yeah. with him. Yeah. These ones seem a little less um, approachable. <laughs> they seem very much like they're the guard around here. They they kind of keep uh, keep things in line. Uh, you see there's like, as you walk by, there's like a, a goblin who's like, rat kebabs, get your rat kebabs. And like, you know, there's various like, you need phones hacked. I can, I can hack your phones. Like these sort of like kind of borderline illegal <laughs> things. Um, as you're making your way through, you see like one Dirk, our woman kind of washing clothes as you guys walk by and the kobolds kind of look to each other. And one of them pulls your pant leg, Gibby, and goes, are we allowed to talk or at least stab us? Are, are they allowed to talk what? Are we allowed to talk, or is he going to stab us? Like, we can give you information, but we don't want to get stabbed. If it's useful, I won't kill you. Okay, right, well, please. I don't I don't know what's useful. I'm, I'm Buddy, sorry. Buddy, look, he's not going to he's not gonna lay a hand on you. Don't worry. I'm okay. sorry. He's, he's really upset about stuff right now, and just, please, by all means, any information would be good. In fact, I'm going to pull out two extra gold and give one to each. Oh, they, like, happily take it. Okay, well, um, you said you're trying to get somewhere or go through or pass through. No one passes through. This is just a place you go. Yeah, we need we need to go through. You're going to the old tunnels. Above game, are we? Is that where we're going yeah, through? Yeah, that's right. You get to Frank's, yeah. Yeah. We're basically we going to walk the empty rails and get up underneath where it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we need to go through the tunnels. Oh, well, um... The only people who really know a lot about the tunnels would be the leaders. Um, if you can appeal to them. Um, is how can we meet with them? Well, we know Varus. He's, you know, cool and awesome and <laughs> badass and great. Um, you know, um, I wouldn't talk to... Um, uh, Grindle Fence wouldn't be interested, but... Um, uh, maybe Rantar? He's a little rough on the eyes, but he's, you know, he likes to help out. Uh, all right. How can we find Oh, that's uh, from Doi. Uh, Varus is a dragon, I should probably say, because you're, you know, probably not from here. Uh, Varus is a red dragon, um, and Rantar is a, is a dragloth. So, you know. Above game, dragloth? Religion, again. <laughs> It's my good roll, too. Ooh, 19! Yay! Ooh. Drag- Dragloth are created through drow rituals. They are fiends, specifically a drow fiend. They tend to be four-armed monstrosities with a mane of white hairs and a sort of long, almost canine-like face. But they are intelligent. Um... Yeah, we'll basically relay that information. Kind of, kind of. Oh, sorry. Monty. Hi. Yeah. Okay, you just kind of stopped talking there for a second. Yeah, because you guys are talking. I mean, that's what you oh. know. You now know Varus is a red dragon, and Rantar is a dragoloth, and they're probably the most likely to know about the the rail line. I kind of lose it. I kind of look to everyone else and go. Uh, I won't lie, considering circumstances i don't know how keen i am to talk to a dragon that is fair. i don't i mean well uh, if, it, but, if it's our best if, if it's our best option then i don't see why we wouldn't uh, <laughs> uh i mean I'll, because we're done losing friends i'll go with what you guys think that's just me why not the uh, what what was his name? Rentar? The Dragoloth? He has four arms. I bet he gives great hugs, so he must have good information. <laughs> um, you guys said that Rentar is it? Yeah, Rantar. He said he's willing to help. He's personable, but you know, he likes good company. Maybe he'd like to learn more about surface stuff. He doesn't go out there ever. Personable is a nice change of pace. 
If you guys don't want to do with the dragon, then I say we go for option B. Okay. Or R in this case. Uh, Worst case scenario, option C is simply find our own way. <laughs> we will see what happens. Uh, take us to him then, please? Uh, sure. We'll talk to some drow. You watch as the two teenage kobolds kind of scamper off forward and kind of gesture for you to follow. Yes, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll follow. Okay. You guys make your way forward eventually, finding a section where you just see a ton of drow. Um, they're in varying different degrees of, of states. Some are kind of, you know, just hanging out, smoking cigarettes, and just kind of talking with each other. Others seem like they're definitely down on their luck. Um... And eventually you are led forward, and you, the kobolds begin to speak to the drow. Does anybody speak under common at all? Nope. nope. No, okay. Nope. Um, and eventually a couple of drow approach and kind of look at you, and one goes up, a female drow, and she goes, You're looking for passage in the rail system. Yes. I'd hate to ask what business you would have with devils, but... Well, who am I to stop a condemnation? You wish to speak with Rantar? Uh, yep, yes. that's... Yep. And they kind of exchange a look. Very well. And they lead you guys forward. You guys make your way through more alleyways. It's surprising how big this space is. It Clearly, this is supposed to be some sort of storage area for, like, the train cars, just given the size of this location. There even are some remaining train cars that have been refitted as homes. Uh, and you can see individuals, like, you know, sleeping inside and curtains, you know, like flowery curtains. Uh, eventually, you are led to what appears to be some sort of, like, office space that has been repurposed. Um, and you can see, you know, some drow kind of hanging out and making their way around. And you guys, they lead you inside unless you guys stop or want to do anything. Um Can I roll another perception check? Absolutely, go for it. Beep, beep. 21! 21! <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, humans are the rarity here. Um, I mean, there's Duragar here, so a dwarf is not too out of the question, but humans? That's weird. So you do have a few people staring at you at the moment. Um, Great! And they're kind of like... perception as well? Sure, absolutely. Gil is... You said there's a lot of drow, right? Yes. What? The drow we worked with. What was that one that Gail befriended? Lenore. Oh, oh God. What was her name again? I it was... I've forgotten her name and Lenore, I don't have right? it in my notes. I think it was Lenore. It's, it's, I have her name in my notes somewhere. I don't have it tapped, though. Vanor. Thank you. Vanor, Vanor, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah Gail yeah. wants to see if he can find Vanor. Okay, go ahead. Do, do, do. 16. I saw you that scan? one creeping there. You scan the crowd, you do not see Venor. Unfortunately, you know that they tend to work in the Lich Ward, mostly. And oh. if they're going to work with anybody, they're going to work with Baron Dramar, and all these people are not on the side of Baron Dramar. You would know that. Yeah, I was hoping. I hope that she's was, doing well. That's the one thing. Beyond the odd goblin, there is very little goblin, bugbear, hobgoblin, or orc activity in this space. Okie dokie. That's all I wanted to do. All right. You guys make your way inside of this draw establishment. It is not like a seedy bar or anything like that. It appears to be just kind of a bunk space. Uh, notably in the side office, you do are led to, and um, there's someone kind of manning the door, and they're like, they wish to see Rantar. And they're like, yeah. And she goes, okay. And lets you guys in. As you guys enter the space, the scent inside is like a weird lavender smell. Um, it smells Ooh. like fake lavender, like, you know, those plug-in wall scent things. That ah. You bought it at, You bought it at, like, a dollar store, and you're pretty sure it'll probably set your house on fire one day. <laughs> um, Rantar is not quite what you expected. Let me describe this thing for you, because it's a fun thing if you do not know what a drag lock looks like. <laughs> I'm just pulling it out real fast. You see currently 
dressed in what looks like similar sort of leather jacket attire, um, except for it's like a bunch of like leather straps almost, um, you know, sort of like like draping robish like attire, like a bunch of cobbled together trench coats that just are kind of tattered. I'm trying to think of like a like an equivalent that I can compare it to outfit wise. It's like someone is wearing a long coat, but like the coat has been cut into like ribbons at the bottom. Um, you see kind of crouching, perched on what appears to be a large mahogany desk, a demonic like creature. Um, it has digigrade legs like a wolf, um, a muscular body like a human and a smaller set of arms with claws at the end, kind of near the, the, the rib cage. And coming from the, the shoulders are massive hand, like arms that have much longer claws, much longer fingers that kind of come down on the desk. And a pulled out, it looks like someone took, took a drow's face and pulled their face out. They have a massive underbite jaw with a series of massive fangs a sort of red demonic eye and these long elf-like ears, and then this is just feathery mane of scraggly white hair that drapes down the shoulders and runs down the back. And the moment you guys enter the room, they cock their head towards you almost curiously, and they go, ah, surface people, how nice, how lovely. Well, that one smells interesting, doesn't it? He's referring to me, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he stares right at you. Brian's pulling out his halberd. Brian, please, it's fine. Hello, we sir. We are sorry to intrude on you like this. I welcome intrusions, especially of those who are of the surface persuasion. There are not many of you who come visiting the Catrail very often. Most tend to avoid it. Most want the favor of Baron Dramar and his orcs, and most don't look here for any semblance of aid. But if you have come to me, you must be desperate. We are looking for a way through the old tunnels. We have somewhere we must go to save a I friend. See. Well, I happen to have some old plans of the tunnels that I'd be willing to trade. If you have something to trade, I'd be willing to part with. I would be happy to give it to you, as I have a couple copies, some reliable and some that need a little bit of touch-ups. You send a couple goblins, they'll add a few inches of information. You know how it is down here. Uh, hmm. Do we have anything that'd be worth trading? Hmm. We've got gold. Uh, let me see what I got. I have no interest in gold. Gold can be found here. I want something that cannot be found here. Do you want a Luigi board? It is used to speak with spirits long departed. A surface device that lets you speak with ghosts. Can, can I see it? Ken will pull the Luigi board out of his pack. <laughs> How does this work? Can you call it a Luigi board? Yes, you place it on the table. Then you place this little glass magnifier on the board. You and others, if you wish to participate with a group, place your hands on the magnifier. You call out to the spirits, asking a question. And they will move your hands along with the glass to their answers. They can even the spell out their names and words. The spirits will. Interesting. Mm, there's no... Lacking of ghosts down here. What else do you have? I'm curious about this, but just for options sake, what else do you have to offer? I have, and get ready for this, an honest to God's torch. And I pull out like a stick with a, uh, with like a piece of, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like turpentine soaked <laughs> rag around it. I just pull it out of my bag. That's <laughs> the absurdity. Wow. You don't see you don't see too many of these around nowadays. You like you see these people with flashlights and stuff like that, and people got lights on their phones now. I've got a torch. Hmm. And kind of look. He takes it from you and looks at it closely and goes, "I'm sure I could find this down here. Or I'll just set something on fire if I'm really worried about it." 
That's an experience worth a thousand words. And maybe oh. access through the... Trail? What about food? Or other fun items? Anything? What about you two? And he kind of looks towards you, Bryant, and Gibby. Uh, Want a burger? We have uh, mincemeat burgers down here. Ah. But have you had one from the surface? Hmm. Yeah, delivered. What do you have? Crispy lettuce plush sesame seed bun. The giant claw reaches <laughs> over to you, Dalcom, and just grips your face closed. Like, <laughs> over your beard. Alright. I'm asking the humans what they have. Humans have all kinds of interesting things. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't have much, and, like, there's certain things I don't want to get rid of. Uh, oh god, don't be mad at me. She... Pulls out her werewolf medallion and holds it out. I have this. It um, repels werewolves. He kind of takes it in his one claw. Like, he just hooks the claw and takes a look at it. Like, he leans his head around and looks at it and goes, Now this is a fun piece. Look at the silver. Craftsmanship by humans. And he places it next to the Luigi board. And you... Brian's going to look at his pockets. He's going to look back to this thing. I ain't got shit. Shame. Well, hmm. I need Gibby and I need Kel to make persuasion checks for me. With advantage. Burger Ten. advantage. Uh, Twelve. Nineteen. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> you have advantage. See if you can get that natural 20. Oh, yeah, see if you can do better. I doubt it. Never say never. Well founded. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> the Dragoloth kind of looks between the two items very curiously, and you can hear him mumble something under his voice, so you guys can make a perception check on that. Mm. Yeah. 16. Tough 20. 17. You hear the Dragloth go, which one would make Varus more jealous? Hmm. I wish to take this human ghost speaking device. And he takes the Luigi board. <sighs> it is yours. Here. So can you... I can have my medallion back? Yeah, he does not take your medallion. Cal is more convincing, so you don't lose Woo! that. He reaches behind himself in almost like a scroll-like formation and hands you this photocopy of the, of the subway system. You'll want to take the northmost tunnel. From there, turn left. You'll access all of the tunnels there, but to get to where you need to go, you'll have to use a map of your own to correspond to this one. Understood. The Thank tunnels are not... For your time. The tunnels are not... Terribly dangerous. Uh, the odd giant rat here and there makes for a good meal. Uh, the trouble is getting lost. But to say you won't run into other denizens would be a gross understatement. But uh, most individuals here are less hostile than we appear. And he smiles and it's just this maw of teeth. When you say our own map, um, how would we get that? Oh, on your funny little square devices that you so love. Oh, uh, right. Thank you. I do hope you visit me again and trade me wonderful things. And you watch as he kind of plays with the Luigi board with his finger a bit. I will definitely keep you in mind. It was wonderful meeting you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do have a question before we go, if I may. Yes, of course. I'm curious if you give good hugs, because the forearms, I like to imagine people tell you you give great hugs. All the drow in the room exchange a look, and he kind of cocks his head and he goes, watch as a hug. It is when you gently embrace another to express uh, affection or admiration. It can be reaffirming. It can, it can convey so much that words cannot. 
he scoops up the Luigi board and hugs it. <laughs> and there's like a time where he just pauses and he drops it to the ground and he looks to you and goes, I was not emotionally fulfilled by that experience. Well, objects it does not typically work with. It's typically people you enjoy. Why would I do that? Uh, it, to be fair, I learned it from my human father. It's yeah, a human thing. It's, it's, a, it's a human thing. Mm. Kaliel, come here. And then he watches one of the draws like, oh, fuck. Like, damn it. And then like, gives, <laughs> gives you a spine. He just like, breaks her spine in front of all of you. <laughs> 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 he watches you, like, takes her and hugs her. And you can just see her glaring at you, like, all of you. Just like, fuck me. Mm. And it's kind of, you see some of the draw in the background, like, <laughs> like try not to laugh. And then he lets her go and you. goes, Oh, go ahead. I gotta tell you, this is something special. He, like, lets go of her, and she just stands there with her arms crossed, looking really pissed off. And he goes, Yeah, still not emotionally fulfilled by that experience. It is something to work on. With the right person. Right. Well, our business has concluded, and while this company is very wonderful, it seems you have something to do and places to go. Of course. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and he begins to play with the Luigi board again. Thank you again, sir. <laughs> sir, interesting. Oh, and you, miss. Uh, yes? Be careful. And he goes back to playing with the Luigi board. <sighs> right. You guys it's have your map of the tunnel system. That will not give you guys disadvantage on survival checks to navigate. Excellent. So Excellent. Now you have awesome. Normal so we'll roll our ones perfectly naturally. Yeah. Woo! Why do you do this, Ed? Why do you do this? Oh, we're gonna get lost anyway because it doesn't help you. And just in case anyone if was wondering, if both sides are a two and a seven, you're still lost. Kill did indeed carry that with him whenever he went. Because <laughs> he wants to talk to ghosts. Because he made a friend but couldn't talk to her. So, as you guys exit out of the drow base um, and make your way back into the Catrail, with the unknown of the tunnels and Frank's auto shop currently occupied by devils ahead of you, and your friend Tannis standing alone, a statue unmoving, in need of your assistance and help, that is where we're going to end the session for tonight. Ah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know well. we had we had a long session last week, and because we're going to have some back to back Prince Division, it's probably good that we end on a maybe a bit more healthier time. But yeah, Good bye, Austin. Austin. Bye, Austin. Bye, Austin. Oh man, I guess you guys are going to have to wait and figure out what I am next time. Yeah, sorry guys. You said you I didn't were show up. Technomancer or whatever. I uh, sure I didn't show off any of my abilities, but yeah. <laughs> This is definitely like, by the way, this is definitely like a side quest thing. Like I, oh boy. I mean, I'm we a could, quest NPC. <laughs> we we could just wait, leave Tannis be, and just wait like three levels for Cal to learn re lesser restoration. I blew oh. a third level slot just to hear your motorcycle talk. <laughs> I, I hope that doesn't come back to bite us in the ass. Well, I'm more worried about the fact that Bryant hasn't had a rest. That is true. You guys could rest before you hit the tunnels if you wanted to, but no. that's up to you. <laughs> no. I, I mean, mean, you guys can rest. He won't rest. Why do you want to get us killed? I don't give a shit about you guys. I mean, wait. I'm going to be right back. <clears throat> Episode right. 38. Episode 38. We, uh, yeah, this is my first time ever having a character, like a player play a different character while the other character's in stasis. So that's definitely a learning experience, that's for sure. It's good. I like Trish. Okay, I think that's saved. I wish I had thought to let her speak earlier. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. All right. That was fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
How are you doing, chat? Hi, chat. People in chat are like, I can't believe Kel just traded a board game for a rare map. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad he had that. I was just like, oh god, I got nothing and I'm not giving up my veil. Uh, I want to get more information about Dragloths, but I don't want to meta. I mean, you're probably not going to meet him again, but Dragloths are very interesting creatures. I did find an image if you want me to link that in chat. Yeah, send that to Sarah so Sarah knows what they just saw. Oh, I googled it. Oh, did you? Curious. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's that's important. I did have the feeling that the, he was going to be able to sense what I was, but between him and the dragon, I was sort of like, the dragon's going to be more inclined to want to take me, and he's also a red dragon. <laughs> This Luigi board has been in Kel's inventory since the episode we used it. It's it's gone. I'll have to get another at some point when I actually have money. Captain Roche, fucking pay me. <laughs> yeah, I'll get that to you guys. Oh, I just saw that big X in Tan over Tannis. It makes me sad. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait for Connor to come back if he ever does. Connor! Yes, Connor! Dude. Yes, do the bits! Connor, return! Connor! Uh, yeah, that was in fun. The, in the meantime, I'm just gonna take us over to happier music. Oh, can you, can you do the one? Can we have the dance? Can we have the dance? Dance club! Dance club! Oh my god. Dance club! Dance, dance club! club! <laughs> dance club! <laughs> Fucking... Yeah! yeah! So good! <laughs> Sorry about that. I My stomach said, hey, guess what? And I was like, I don't like this game. Uh, this I game love, that we play. I love Dwarf Dance Party. <laughs> I love Dwarf Dance Party, too. Uh, so good. Without goofy rewards today, oh. I'd say this is pretty fitting. Uh, the song is called Club Seamus. It's Excellent. by Kevin McLeod. All right, so I suppose we should do our outros then. Uh, Arkolf, where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Arkolf. And tomorrow I may be streaming the PS4 Spider Man. Oh. Technically the remastered version. Technically PS5. Not always uh, about the money, Spider-Man. Like, the last time I played a Spider-Man game, it was the PlayStation 1. Oh, wow. The original. And I've still got all the jokes from it, right in my noggin. Yeah, that's it for me. Excellent. Bosco. What are you up to? Where can they find you? Find me at Ed Bosco VM, both Instagram and Twitter, right here on Twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco. Woo! Yeah, I'm happy to be uh, here, man. Yeah. Uh, Sarah with an H and with an E. Willia, where can they find you? Find me on Twitter at Sarah with an H and with an E. Willia. I don't do a lot of streaming, so it's kind of the only place I am. Sorry. Woo! Woo. And Monty, where can they find you? You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. I will be streaming tomorrow. I will be streaming Metopia. It is a great time. It's a very stupid, dumb, great time. Please check it out. Um, beyond that, you can see what I'm up to on my Twitter. Woo! Uh, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, playing some. 20 games tomorrow a bit of an earlier uh, a bit of an earlier stream from me because I want to watch all out tomorrow uh, so we'll be playing some Wildermyth uh, at some point earlier in the day uh, yeah be sure to check out Dead House Sonata the action RPG where you play as the dead to fight the living uh Got a lot of information rolling out about that uh, over on their Twitch and their YouTube channel. You follow that link that just got posted in chat. 
learn more about that. Also check out my DMs Guild, where the Accursed Fighter will be coming out sometime you know, within the next couple of weeks. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And our wonderful sponsor for this episode's festivities was, as always, Die Hard Dice. Yeah! Die Hard Dice has a wide variety of dice and dice accessories, including but not limited to dice trays, carrying cases, dice towers, both polymer and metal dice of many different styles, shapes, sizes, and color. Best in the world! And if you want to uh, pick up some dice before you go to sleep, you can go to uh, dieharddice.com. And if you use the code the Unexpectables, you can get 10% off your entire order. And now I believe, uh, anybody know where we left off for the bits? I do not. Uh, my guess would be around flustered bun-ish. I think someone asked me a question was where we last left off during the break. Oh, the, the Doolahan? Yeah, the Doolahan question, I believe. And then we started, I think. Mm. Let's see. Uh, well, I'll go ahead. <laughs> Shit. Um, I'll just start here. Uh, Magic Ninjago, thank you for the 50 bits. Thank goodness I had my headphones on, because my Alexa would have gone off as well. <laughs> Fusa Monkey, thank you for the 100 bits. The sheer amount of tax evasion. Zenlita, thank you for the 300 bits. Connor, you are now Rampoon City's Alpha <laughs> Damn. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Uh, You're what now? Uh, I'm, I'm Rampoon City's Alphano. <laughs> oh, it's in Final Fantasy Four. Got it. Yeah. Flustered Bun, thank you for the 300 bits. Good night, y'all. Fell asleep at my desk to wake up about 10 minutes ago. Fun session, though. The Bryant scene hurt my soul. Trish talking was fantastic. Uh, Arch Requiem D, thank you for the 100 bits. So what is Trish based on? Uh, if you're talking about specifically what motorcycle she's based on, she's based off of the... She's based off of the... What did I say? The 2006 Triumph Rocket 3 Classic. Uh, black and Maroon. Uh, Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. In today's episode of the Prince Division, due to going full statue, the role of Tannis will now be played by Double May Cry's Trish, and due to and due to going full gargoyles, the role of Bryant will be played by Keith David. Huh. Damn. Dusty Bone, thank you for the 45 bits. I don't know about you guys, but I was definitely emotionally fulfilled by this episode. Speaking of which, episode title pitch. Breaking Ground. Ooh, I like that. Hmm. Pupusa Monkey, thank you for the 100 bits. My family decided to give our dog away today, and I've been down all day, and the episode really made me feel better. Thank you, you guys. Uh, sorry about Pupus. that. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Cosmosis45, thank you for the 100 bits hype train. And I imagine the... Uh, Dragaloff being played or being portrayed like an alien on Farscape. Uh, Volk551, thank you for the bit. I was hoping for a Doolahan NPC to show up in one of your games. Listen, uh, you want to you want rah rah rah. I have some bad news. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Jurgen247, thank you for the 100 bits. I don't know how, I don't know why Gibby is so worried about meeting a red dragon. I'm sure Monty said that the dragons of the Prince Division don't follow the standard DD alignments. I've yes, but it is also about... a powerful. Sorry, go ahead. Powerful, it is a powerful creature that uh, will be drawn to her princessness. I've only known, I only know of one red dragon, and he's apparently the worst of the bunch, so. Indeed. And Dice Ruler, thank you for the gifted sub. 
And that's it for us for this evening. All right. Who do we want to raid? I have someone, but if you guys have some recommendations. Uh, who do you want to raid, Monty? Draco. She's streaming Dead by Daylight, and I haven't raided her in a mm. long time. Uh, Draco's not Therapod. I'm down with that. Okay. Aww. Wow. Oh, damn. What wow. Let what? me just refresh to be sure that she's still streaming. Yeah, let's. I'll double check as well. Make sure here. Make sure she's not ending. Yeah, this is that she's. Wait, one, Darko, Draco, one. We good to go? Yeah. Well, our, I think our raid message should be like Vroom. Vroom. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Vroom, get out of here. Bye, guys. Have a good night.